What up, bosses? Your man, MBI. We're going to be getting our QT of the Battle Right Tournament 2v2, sponsored by Play Tawny, underway very shortly. We're just waiting for the few remaining players to make sure they've clicked in. So if you're watching right now and you are part of the team, make sure to check in right now, otherwise you are going to miss out. Hope you guys are having a good day so far. We should hopefully get some kick-ass games on the way. We had some, had a lot of fun with the NA and EU games last week. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be pulling out the big plays today. Also, don't forget if you want to be featured in my top five plays, doing we or oh, about two to three weekly top plays a week so if you guys want to be featured in that you can drop me a message below or drop me a comment on my YouTube channel with your battle right in-game ID and also the clip name. If you don't know how to make a clip it's in the top right hand corner you have the replay feature if you click on there post a play you can shorten down your clip and share it with your friends and also you can then share it with me and be featured in my top five plays so how cool is that? We should be able to check out the brackets right now. So, let's see. So this is our current teams. I have sorted out the brackets this time. So we can see who's going to be featured. It's literally just waiting for everything. We're probably about two, three minutes, and we'll be able to get into our first matchup today. So looking forward to it. We did see uh, Condemned and his buddy picking it up last week in some plays with the uh, Shifu and Lucy combo, it worked really well. I think we cast like two or three of their matches throughout the tournament and they certainly did wreck. Alright, we're literally two minutes away guys and we will be getting underway, just waiting for those final stragglers to kick in. Hopefully you bosses are be bringing who are actually competing today are gonna be bring out the big plays. Didn't actually get any of the big didn't get any I didn't see a mass play, we had some nice games but no real big plays coming out, so hopefully we can get some people in my next top five.
What up, rap? Welcome aboard, buddy. Hope you're having a good day so far, man. So also we do have the NA tournament, that's going to be at midnight, a few hours to go to them. But most likely, probably, or depending on how quick the games are, we're probably looking about maybe two hours, I think for the last E one took, the NA one was a bit quicker, I think the quickest game we saw was about four minutes, it was, it was, it was the quickest game I've actually seen, so that was, that was over pretty damn quickly, so um, yeah, we'll see how long these ones last for. It is a fully packed tournament. We do have some people on the waiting list. If you didn't make this tournament, uh, this week you can register at Play Tourney. Next week, come Tuesday, the Q3 will be up and you'll be able to register then. We also have Q4 on the next the next following Friday, so you've still got plenty of chances to get involved. And with the finals taking place on 11th November, with a $250 prize pool for EU and then a separate prize pool as well for NA. Get involved. This is where it's at. I would certainly recommend it, Ratman. I'm absolutely loving Battle Right. The uh, community for it seems pretty strong at the moment. £15. It will be going free to play come January, but by investing in the game now, you get to play it now, which is super cool. You get to be one of the cool kids. And also, you do get all the characters unlocked forever, which is a really nice feature. I think it's a great game for, for an early access game to come out like it has and have so much content. I think it's super cool. So, looks like we're literally. Get underway now. Wait to get invited in, and then we'll be able to get underway and start kicking some ass. I'm waiting for the big plays. I am hype, big hype, for sure. I think it's really cool as well the replay system. I, I, that's one thing why I really love it. Uh, why I straight away noticed was the whole replay system. It was something where I've been a, a massive player of League of Legends for the last five years, and I can't believe they never implemented one. Like that battle right, it's already got it going straight away, it's so cool. And it just allows, it's really nice to share plays, and you know, obviously you guys can share your plays with myself for the top five, which is super cool. It's just big hype. I, I'm really excited to see where the game's going to be going. I mean, there's certainly a lot of potential, for sure. It's such early days. So we're just waiting on the final player, and we will be getting our first game underway for today. Interesting, we we saw a lot of Shifu last round, he seemed to be a very popular pick. Didn't see too much of Varus, which I was a bit disappointed, I am a big fan of him, his counter play is really strong, but I do feel that he's a, really, he's a hard champion to play, but you can land those counters, he can be so deadly, but yeah, everyone certainly was going for the Shifu, we did see him in both finals. Croak was quite popular, and also it was interesting to see the mix of... Um, Support and melee champions. Did you, did they go for a support or didn't they? I mean, kind of saw sort, of, uh, sort of a bit of a mix, really. So, waiting for the final person. There's always one. There's one. So we have two alpha testers. I, I never actually heard of the game until it was released on Steam, and it but built off a big hype. I never actually got around to playing Bloodline Champions, which is a bit sad because if this game is anything to go by, I imagine Bloodline Champs would have been a lot of fun to play. Hopefully, you're going to bring over some of the features I see. They, I noticed that they actually had a capture the flag mode, which I thought was really cool. So being able to have something like that in-game would be sweet. I'm not sure how they would actually implement it to at the moment, but I think there's a lot of potential, which is nice to see, and I can't wait till they start adding more champions in. See, the latest champion just got announced, and we're going to be seeing him at the end of the month, which is going to be cool. More of a tank man myself, though, even though I do really enjoy Jade and Varus, though. The likes of Rook and Baku are just deadly.
Hopefully, he's added us. I don't think that I can actually necessarily invite him in. I don't feel that I should be able to invite him in as an actually the fight leader. Yeah, uh, well, literally come January, man, it's going to be going free to play, so it's um, not too far, not too far to go now, man. But if you do have the spare money, I'd recommend investing in it. It helps the devs out for sure, and you know you get to play the game right now, which is super cool. And also, there's just there's so much content for an early access game to already have with about six maps, 15 characters, I believe, at the moment. The one there's just been the one announced, which is going to be coming out at the end of this month. Cool mounts and. So much more cool, te cool content to come. Okay, we don't, I really don't understand how I can be inviting them, but there we go. Oh, everyone's leaving, I guess. Okay. Technical difficulties. Uh, we're literally going to repart, recreate the um, party, and try again. There's a way in. I turned, turned the music off specially, because I thought we'd, uh, we'd jump straight in, but that's not the case. Okay, alright, this is looking a lot better. This is looking a lot better. This is what we want to see, a full party. So, starting off Q2, we're going to be having Koopy and Meopath coming against K3B4B1. That's an interesting name, and God of. Lovely, lovely cake. I'm loving, loving that portrait. That's beautiful. I thought my fish was cool, but man, who doesn't love cake? Sweet! Here we go then. So we'll see who's going to be taking our team comp for today. We do have currently Baku and Shifu, which is uh, quite an interesting combo. Potentially, maybe they're going to be switching up. Or Croak. It'll be interesting if they do actually run two melees here against two range. It'd be an interesting matchup for sure. It looks like it's going to be the case. It's going to be Croak and Shifu coming up against the Lucy and Teocom. So, a heal and range versus two melee. So, they're going to really have to look to assassinate Lucy. One thing I do find with Lucy that she is pretty squishy. Um, well, she has her shields, but she does kind of lack that escape. So, we'll see how this actually pans out. As we're currently waiting on the croak, these two on the red side take it out on the dummies. They never stood a chance. The poor guys. Watch out now! Okay, we have a pause already. I think maybe uh, it looks like croak potentially had some connection issues coming into this. Hopefully, we'll be able to reconnect and we can get everything underway. Okay, it looks like he's connected, and we should be able to resume any second now. Here we go then. So, getting QT, Q2 underway is going to be the red team with Taya and Lucy facing the blue team, which is going to be Shifu and Croak. I'm a big fan of Croak, and he was one of the first champions I actually picked up when starting the game, so it'll be interesting to see how he actually plays this if he is here. Potentially, he's here. Okay, he's here. Not to worry. One thing you have to really watch out for Shifu is his counter abilities, his conjure is so strong. And I think that's a part of the game at the moment. With, with the counter abilities compared to other MOBAs, the fact that you can counter something 
makes the play potential so strong and also the mind games because you could run in there say and he potentially if you know he's going to counter then you're waiting out the counter but then if you wait for too long and he doesn't actually counter then you've kind of wasted time and he's been able to attack you for free and it's, it really becomes especially at a higher level just a, a big mind game so we'll see how this actually pans out as we get underway also I think the secure in the middle orb which we were talking about in Last week's tournament is really important. Teams that were able to secure the middle over straight away generally were actually able to take a big lead and take the round for themselves. So you see blow for blow going down, but Croak already taking some big yeah. damage right. here. Okay. We do see a bit of a split focus with Croak taking such an early pounding, he's kind of holding on the backside. Both the blue team under 50% health at the moment. And this is the problem I was talking about where the blue team haven't been able to do enough damage at the moment and they've been poked out by Teo who's already got her ultimate, called in a companion, and this looks like an easy victory. Easy Easy round taken by the red team right here. So we'll see how the blue team switch things up. It did not work very well. They really need to get on top of Lucy. If they don't get on top of Lucy, one, they're going to get poked down. It was very nice played by Teo. She got some nice stuns off there and was able to keep them away with her whirlwind ability as well. <laughs> the blue team got absolutely wrecked. And the problem is, even if they do some damage and the, the red team are able to put away, they're going to be able to heal up and that's going to cause an issue. So GG, very nice, very nice by the red team. The blues come maybe a bit too. So that's the nation, and the thing we even both champions do kind of lack the uh, escape mobilities. They don't have the jumps and the cloaks like other ch other rangers do. The shields and also their knockbacks, and as you can see there, used by Taya, have to be really vital here. And the, the, I feel that Shifu and Croak need to be focusing at the same time. And the whole time here, Croak has been doing nothing, so Shifu's just taking a blunt of damage. And again, they're here that they're just going in one by one. I feel if they go in both at the same time, you know, they're not going to take as much damage as they kind of just not playing this as well as I feel they could be. The red team do pick up both health orbs and also I believe secured that middle orb then which is a big blow for the blue team as they want to be picking up their ultimates but they have got Lucy down quite low so potentially this could be a nice turnaround as Croak's under 10% health at the moment. And Lucy once again is now just going to be able to start healing these two up. And I think this is where the blue team have lost their advantage. They, they started off the round reasonably well, even though it was kind of a bit split. I feel that, again, they should have been grouping up as the red team once again to kill middle orb. And losing out on that middle orb, I think, has actually going to cost them this game as they can just be, they're just going to get poked down now. They're not going to be able to heal through this. As you can see, Shifu going in, and he uses the Kundra ability, but I don't think that's going to actually save him here. Unfortunately, and you, the issue here is Croak only just picked up his ultimate with 10 seconds remaining. So that, that was the case where they tried working on the uh, middle orb and they weren't able to secure it, and I think it's causing some issues. Hey, Dragon Man, it's all good, buddy. I'm glad to hear that. You need to honor it. Battle Ride, sir. Great game. We'll have to have some games at some point, man. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the rank of these individuals playing right now. We'll get the brackets up after the game and we can ha have a look. Uh, you can check yourselves at play20.com. We'll be able to check who the players are. So, coming in, we have the red team two rounds up. If they take this, they will be moving on to the next round. As Lucy does take a bit of damage here, but again, this is what I'm talking about. They're completely split here. Shifu's decided to actually focus Taya whilst Croak's going for Lucy. And I'm not sure if these players are on voice comms, but they really need to make up their mind what they're going to be doing here, because the longer they leave this, the more they get poked down, and the more the enemy team heals up, as the red team do actually secure middle orb there. And I think this is going to be over in a matter of seconds almost. A really nice whirlwind coming in by Taya. Deadly play with a shield coming in from Lucy. A nice contest state will slow down the pace of this, but there isn't much more they can do make happen here. But you can see they bait out his conjure ability, and at this point he's kind of left on his own. With Croak just too low to even contest here, and it's going to be a nice retreat by the red team. Command companions called him by Tear. I can't wait to hope. Uh, hoping that they um, will make it so that they ride the mount that they have. I just love to see her come in like the le a legendary goblin frame mount that they just come running into the arena and she rides on them. <laughs> that would be so cool. So GG, first victory of today, going to the red team. It was a pretty dominant game really. The blue team just didn't stand a chance. I feel they split focus a bit too much. You know, they, they really, if they were going to do anything, they had to, if it was Lucy or Taya, either one, I think Lucy's better because the Taya's knockback could cause an issue, but <laughs> she actually uses that, you know, they could get on her, but they didn't, and they just got poked down, and at the point, they got, yeah. <laughs> at right. that, that point, they got hammered down yeah. so much, it made it easy for the um, red team, they could just kind of kite them around, heal up, and it was GG. So it was a risky strategy running these two melees. We'll see if it actually happens later in the tournament, but it certainly didn't work out in this game. So GG. So we'll 
get the brackets up. Let's see uh, what's actually going on for the next round. So you can check out the brackets yourselves on playtourney.com. There's no need to actually refresh the page. They should automatically it should automatically refresh. We just have to wait for the results. As you can see, it's currently doing something right now. We just have to wait for the results to um, come in. Uh, yeah, GG. Really nice pickup by the red team. The blue team just really didn't stand a chance, unfortunately. I was looking forward to seeing what they could make out of it, but it just it just didn't come alive. We're just going to wait for the next game. It should be a couple of minutes and we'll be able to get in. I believe the way it works is, like I say, you don't have to actually refresh it, but we just have to wait for everyone who's actually played in this re round to, um, for it to refresh. You see I actually have some losses coming in already. Next game will be shortly, my friend. We're probably about two minutes away. We're just waiting for the final games to finish and we'll be able to move on to the next game now. Yeah, it's going well, man. It's going well. It's uh, a bit hectic, a lot of mass, which is super fun, but yeah, it's going good, buddy. I'm not actually sure. I'm just waiting for the devs who are uh, hosting the website Play Tawny to message me, so I'm not as sure who we are, actually, what next game we're going to be casting. Man. I think it's more the case of who's actually uh, ready for the next one. see the game so here we go so we actually looks like every team is through at the moment see the teams that have actually qualified we have team bob versus baby mail i wonder if it's the real baby mail how cool would that be <laughs> big bertha are going to be taken on dang notive hello against avis dream going to be taken on busk 11 on Movo against Incap of OP Baby Rage. I really do wonder where you guys come up with these team names. Let's see, Team Bob. I love Team Bob. I, I always go for Bob. That is generally my character name. I can never come up for anything better. So, generally, my like wild character names or anything on like an MMO is like Bob the Evil Wizard. Uh, so, be taking on Baby Mel. Icon against Team Capo. Hombre for life, of course. 
life for the T against the TR boys and finally we're going to have the 5 Etties against MK team. So literally just waiting for everyone to be ready, they're getting the guys to host the next game. So we'll probably be about just under 2 minutes, I imagine we'll be into the next game. Interesting to see what we rock, the Shifu and Croak really did not work out very well. They got absolutely uh, wrecked, that was the same. <laughs> <laughs> say the least. Uh, and it's an, it was an interesting combo, and I kind of felt you know they maybe could put it off, but really with the split focus, the way they played it, it wasn't the best. Uh, it was always going to be hard. You make that one mistake, they don't land their conjure abilities or their stuns and so forth. It's going to cause some issues. So it looks like our party is pretty much ready, and we should be able to jump into the next. Hop this here, I love it. Nice, it's great. Hop game, that's what I want to hear. The top game, I think there's some big plays, eh? Sweet. Alpha testers. Oh, I wish I would have was around for to get involved in the alpha. If I knew about this game, I'd have been straight on it. I'm glad to be involved now, which is cool. So much cool fortune. Look at this cookie and milk cakes, man. Left with my little fishy. I quite like my fish, but I'm feeling disappointed seeing all these cool portraits. Oh, so we having a double support? No, no, I was getting hyped up by that. You can see the magical old or there, which is cool. We saw some really strong old or play coming out of um, coming out last round or last tournament, should I say? Let's see what he can uh, pick up today. Okay then, as we are about to get underway in our second round tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be seeing Older and Asgar facing up against Croak and Jade. Alrighty then. Big fan of Jade, I think um, she can bring out some deadly damage in case of her landing her stun. Also, the one thing you want to watch with your abilities is the fact that by landing your abilities, the more you land abilities, the quicker you build up your ultimate. And Jade with her snipe, I think it's about 14%. It gives you instantly and energy-wise, and then with her, with also with her silence, you know she's got quite a few abilities that she build up that armor super quick. And she does actually decide to cancel out a snipe. Then so one thing is you get a higher level play uh, for you low-level players watching is that actually canceling your abilities. You know instead of missing your shot, you can actually cancel it, which puts it back under cooldown instead of actually being the full cooldown. There. But we see older actually taking the shot, but not going to make anything of it. Middle orb has spawned, and the red team do secure. This. So let's see how this plans out as it's playing quite passive moments. Croak and Haskell bounce up on the top side and Jay going on to Oldor. Red team side are going to pick up the help orbs. So we do have to remember they have no healer here so they're really going to have to put some damage down. Otherwise they feel they're going to be out sustained in which we saw in the last round. Already Oldor picking up his ultimate. You can see the difference here. And we'll see if he actually what use he's going to make out of this. Croak's jumping in, put some nice damage down, but Asko again using his free projectiles and landing everyone there. Jade does actually miss three shots of her for there. Older, I don't think actually made any use out of his ultimate at all, but Jade's ulted down. I feel that the blue team do have advantage now, but Asko is dropping low and middle orb is about to pop up. Dub a double deadly diamond, and I think that's GG. Really nice. That double ultimate from Croak, I think. Turn the fray here, and that's Asko can make a 2v1 out of this. The green health holes are up, but a nice stun coming in by Jade and GG. Wow, very well played by the red team. I thought the blue were actually about to take that then, but that was a really nice turnaround. The fact that Croak actually hit both both targets with his uh, when and win blade then was deadly. Very nice. I feel that Asuka is just such a, an annoying champion to deal with, he, he's just so high mobile, the fact that he has two dashes, and then even if you have his ultimate, I guess it could be counted as a third escape, and his ultimate just in general does so much freaking damage, the, 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 the little mini stun it does in between, it's certainly not something you want to get involved in too often. So, really nice, I thought that after the um, start there, that the blue team were going to take that, but big turnaround by the red, they have the damage there, they just need to, if they can get on the same target, especially with Jade lining up her deadly snipe, maybe GG. We do actually see Croak actually does have the blue mount. Ah, this is the first time I've actually seen this in game. This is for uh, big people involved in the community and also developers. So that's really nice from what I believe he's a big time streamer. So 
attention. That's how he's got his mount. But that is so cool. Oh, I thought my I thought my little um, Molten Warhound mount was cool, but definitely not. Uh, that tops it for sure. A nice block in coming by Oldo. I think it's a really strong ability, especially with Jade as something that he can counter and then actually throw it back on his enemy. As he does actually land it on Croak, but we don't see too much come off of it. As we're currently spinning around. It does look like Blue Team are poking them down quite nicely here, but it only takes a second for Croak and Jade to get on their target and follow them down. She does actually pop her ultimate, but counters by Older's ultimate, and both teams dropping under 50% health. Croak does go in with Donovan in, and once again that burst damage, that ultimate is... <laughs> oh, that is insane. The uh, tick coming out of it, and uh, that's GG. I really can't see Asgard making too much here, as he does actually lose that middle orb, and I feel the red team are going to take this to round two. Great dodge coming in by Jade. Poor little guy is stuck up on the top side. And that's going to be GG. Really nice. Again, I felt that the blue team were looking quite strong, but that Croak's ultimate, just the damage coming out from it is, is just. Un it just can't deal with that, bro. You can't deal with that. I was it. Oh, well, I'm blown away. I, I know Croak did, could do some damage, but that, that was something else. Really nice. I'm a big fan of Aura. I don't actually play, I haven't played much older myself, but I've seen some really nice older players. You can, if you kind of, um, you don't, you leave them alone and you can really put some big damage out. Nice night coming in by Jade, and it's those shots right there, especially if your teammate can follow that up where you really put some big damage. But Jade's kind of on her own, and Croak's sitting on the backside right now. If, if he actually followed in right there, they could have really put some big pounding down. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too much of an issue with the red team starting to take a command and lead here. Another deadly snipe onto Older, and Jade's literally all, pretty much already got her ultimate here as the red team do secure middle or which again, I can't express the importance of securing that. She does go to line up a snipe, a nice streak in coming by Asuka. She gets a spell block onto Older, and I think he's going to be picked off in a matter of seconds here. She does unload her ultimate, but a nice counter. I don't think that's actually going to be enough. He does use rewind time and brings him back, but only to face Croak in the end here, getting another spell block. She does actually miss a sniper as he jumps over the wall. Using his ultimate, he is actually delaying us out here, and they are starting to turn this around. Potentially, the blue team could be winning this, as Asgar is actually on uh, full health at the moment. This is starting to turn into quite an interesting battle as Croak he is going to actually secure both green health orbs in there. Asgard has popped, picked up his ultimate right now, so let's see what UC actually makes of this as he's about to drop the eight. She does enter the style frame and he is actually going to leave her alone here. Let's see if he is going to actually be able to finally pick her up. And he has. GG. What a turnaround by the blue side, unless Croak can actually, he is uh, about 60% off and getting his ultimate here, so I don't think we're going to be seeing him actually winning this one right now. There is actually a full ultimate if he picks this up. If he can line it up, we have seen him do it so far this game. It would be very impressive, but <laughs> I think he's going to struggle this time around. He does actually land it onto older, but a very time, very timed ability. He actually does dodge out, dodge the tick damage coming from that, which was well played. And GG, good, good, um, good turn around by the blue team there. Very impressive. I just noticed we actually have fog of war on it. Let's turn that off for the next round. Really well played. That was a big turnaround. Uh, Red were actually, I thought they were dominating that again then, but well played though. I think the blue team can certainly do it. They just need to um, kite them a little bit better, as we saw then, and it worked out really nicely. I, I think the bit of the issue was Jade actually landed some really nice snipes, snipes at the start of the game, but Croak just wasn't there to follow up the damage, and by the time he did get involved, Jade had kind of taken a bit of a beating and allowed the um, blue team to take this round, which was very well played. So they're just going to take it, red team, they do pick up, this will be moving on to the quarterfinals and we'll see how it goes down. Middle orb's about 6 seconds away again, the importance of that is pretty damn huge. We'll see how this pans out. That's got going in and he uses a nice projector that actually does uh, dislodge Jade and makes a miss of sniper ability then, which is good to see. Again, this is where I'm kind of talking about the split focus. And again, Jade missing another snipe. Those snipes with a 10 second cooldown, it's a big amount of damage. And also, it's not necessarily so much the damage, it's a good amount of damage in the stun, but building up that energy bar as quick as possible, because her ultimate, four shots, if she can land all four of those, you're pretty much going to be killing her squishy there. She does actually start unloading her ultimate onto older. A nice juke away, but with only 20% health remaining, I think he's actually going to struggle to turn around. As she lands up a really nice snipe as he comes out of his unvulnerability right there. And I think this is going to be the red team taking this easily, as Croak does actually land his venom and Asgar can only delay here. And GG, very nice, t very, very well played by the red team. 
It was a close match. You know, I feel the blue team could have always had the first. I feel they should actually have had the first round. Um, that double ultimate by Crow actually too it was huge. And then coming on to the uh, the next round, they did actually pick one up as we saw them use a team to the comp to their full potential. But uh, unfortunately, comes the end. The red team just had too much damage, and they were unable to compete. The, the croaks just so high, high mobile with the double jump and also the leap. He was able to avoid a lot of the incoming skill shots. And you know, if Asuka misses a stun, which you know against the croaks, pretty hard to land. And with Jade landing some nice deadly snipes that round as well, and getting her ultimate pretty quick was the issue. So GG. Okay, so we're literally probably going to be a couple of minutes until the next round. I'll get the, uh, shall get the brackets up for you guys whilst we wait. I'd be uh, worried of buying any codes off eBay wrap. You, know, you don't actually really have any protection if you were to buy one, so I think the best option if you were to do anything is just pay a little bit more money and get it off Steam. At least you're 100% yeah. guaranteed. Right. Uh, I know that I had yeah. some issues yeah. before where I actually um, purchased a league account off eBay. I had some like rare skins, so I, you know I, I, I picked it up. And it was around about 60 pounds. You know, it was quite a bit of money, but the account was certainly worth more than that. And um, uh, which obviously you know, goes against their guidelines, so League aren't going to help you, and uh, anyway this guy, he had a good reputation actually, he ended up kind of uh, screwing me over, and uh, I went to eBay and they said they wouldn't do anything, which is like stupid, they're like, well it's against our policy, then why are you selling it on your website? PayPal, you know, I thought well I bought through PayPal, but you know, they wouldn't do anything because it's a digital purchase they can't track it or something that was some special wording but eventually I went to my bank and they actually gave me the money back for it which was cool but yeah I would be wary of buying stuff like that on eBay there's just no protection and if it seems too good to be true then it generally is really so it looks like um yeah. All right. We're about one minute, okay. probably yeah. about one or two minutes away from the next game, guys. Not too long to go. This is currently knockout stages, I guess you could call them. And then we'll be going into the quarterfinals, semifinals, to the finals, and then NA will be getting underway at midnight. And then we still have um, Q... so this is Q2. We then have Q3 next Friday, which is the 21st, and Q4, which is the final qualifier on the 28th. Of October and then we have the final which is a $250 prize pool so for everyone that's qualified the winners from the previous events will take place in the final on uh, November the 11th the same time as now 7 p.m. and the NA one at midnight with both, to with both tournaments with a $250 prize pool. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, if you've missed this tournament buddy, the sign up for the next one will be Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, so if you miss this, uh, this one you can join up Tuesday. And then also we still have the Q4, so if you do miss next week so you can't make it, then you still have the Q4 on the 28th of October, so you can sign up three days in advance on the Tuesday. We're just waiting for the uh, event to be created, the party to be created, should I say. Hello right, boss, let's go and good man, how are you doing yourself? The tournament's going good so far, we've had uh, the ga last game was probably the best one I've actually seen out of both tournaments we've casted so far, it was really nice to see some great players coming in, I really thought the blue team were going to take it at times, but the red team with the um, broken jade was a deadly combo. Okay, it looks like we're, oh, we're disconnected now. Looks like that might have not worked. Almost ready, we're literally just waiting for our invite again and we'll be able to get our next round out of the way, bosses. Cool. Double fans, I love it. Portraits, where are they come from? <laughs> if only boss, we haven't seen any Palomas just yet. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on that, it's good to know. I haven't actually played much Paloma myself, so I kind of felt, it was weird when I was watching it, I, I couldn't really understand what happened, so I just took the fact that you completely mistimed it, which seemed weird because it just kind of seemed like, why would you do that? But, um, yeah, my bad. Learn something new every day. Okay, so we're literally... About 30 seconds we'll be getting underway. Looks like we're going to be seeing Baku, who is my man. Big, big, uh, big love for Baku. Against Lucy, uh, with Lucy, sorry, and potentially a Pearl. It would be interesting to see some Pearl. I, I watched a funny clip the other day of Pearl, who was able to, because the uh, enemy team kept procking her counter, she was able to keep popping bubbles upon bubbles. So our team, we have Team Bob. Big out for Team Bob. I'm, I'm a Team Bob man. <laughs> no favoritism, but Bob. I love the name. Versus Team Capo. Okay, here we go then, boys. We meet. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. I can, um, without you guys' feedback, I never, never get better. So it's nice to know. And also now, when I, oh, we actually have a Paloma. Do we have a Paloma? Oh, no, tripping balls. We do actually have a Paloma. I'm not really sure what happened. I thought it was a Pearl. It was a Pearl and a Shifu. They changed that really quickly. Big love. We're actually going to see Varus coming in, which I'm a big fan. I mean, didn't actually see too much of him in the last tournament, so we'll see what he can actually come out here. I think he's a really strong champion if he can actually make the counter plays. Those counters, are we actually going to see him take it? Uh, so his level 1 talent, so this Wuju is his counter ability, this is his Q, so if they attack him or a projectile, uh, and he times it right, or a melee attack, he will actually counter their ability, dash through them, stunning them, also can hit multiple targets, and if he does it again in 1.4, or they do it again in 1.5 seconds, then it will proc it again. So we'll see how it pans out here, again with these counter abilities, the same with like Shifu, and Cirrus, it's all a mind game, as we do actually see him land it here, and if he can hit both targets, it can be real deadly. Lucy and Paloma coming in, put him some nice damage, I really they want to be focused on Lucy down here as Baku's going to be able to eat their hits for days. But he is actually taking some big damage here and Lucy's not able to heal through this, I didn't actually, I think the red team picked up the middle orb then, I'm not 100% sure. 
blue as Baku's already picked up his ultimate with his count ability down. This is going to be a good time for Baku to actually make use of his ultimate as he does actually use his warp. He has no escapes now. Baku, oh, he does actually miss his ultimate. Okay, but that was his time. I think that's going to actually this round going to be over for the blue team there. We've. Um, Varus actually leaping in with his R ability then, he had no escape with his Wuja actually down, I think that was going to be the perfect time to actually pop him down, but unfortunately Baku was a little bit too late to the party and then panicked and actually whiffed his ultimate and he's only going to be able to lay things here. GG, nice pick up by the red team. Very nice. Uh, I love that guy, he reminds me of um, Mew from Pokemon. So Team Bob, unfortunately, our blue team, do actually lose the first round out here. And uh, red team, who is Team Kepo for you guys, just to make that out aware of. They take it out on the dummies. These guys have a hard life, man. Poor guys, they're just constantly getting respawned to die and die and die and die and die. Um, Alright, we'll switch cameras because she is making me dizzy. These guys seem to be a bit more chilled out. Uh, I'm not too sure we're actually waiting here. It looks like we're waiting on Varus to take his final talent. Here we go. So he's actually going to take... It's a shame because these talents do disappear. It'd be nice to talk about these a bit more. He actually follows the build I really like going for him. and hit his guard, so th that's his shield ability. Uh, when he puts it on himself, he does heal. So he does kind of lack a bit of mobility if he misses counters, but with his shield and also the fact that he can heal, it's really nice. You know, 14 doesn't sound like much, but with a game where you've only got 220 health, a 14 heal is pretty damn strong. As he is trapped in the corner here, but Lucy not actually really following the damage as a kind of split, and they are on the bottom side, so this is going to be a perfect time for the red team. I can't see them losing this middle wall. And again, the importance of this is giving you the health, which isn't so much necessarily important at the start, but the fact that you're able to build up your ultimate quicker is certainly going to be deadly here, as they're already about 20% away from picking their ultimate. She is bashed into the wall, but the blue team are really taking a bit of a pounding at the moment. Aku and Lucia is just not really working too well. I just don't feel that they have the damage here at the moment. Baku is unable to get in. They're kind of split. He is going to try and secure the middle orb, and the red team do once again pick it up. We do see Paloma pick her up one up here. We'll see what she's going to be able to make out of this. A bit of split focus. Lucy seems to be their prior target now. And also we have to remember with uh, Varus the fact that his left mouse button does actually deny some healing. I think it's around about 50%. So that's going to be kind of down and it's going to be making Lucy actually harder for him to her to heal back through here. As he did actually make use of his ultimate as we lose him on the box side, I think he got actually got two hits. He may have actually got a third one and some big damage went down there. And Lucy isn't really going to make a stand much of a chance here as re the red team look to take around two. As Paloma just kind of chills on the backside as you do. I love it. I find myself being stuck in these 2v1 situations where you kind of get cocky. I've lost in many of a 2v1 because I start doing dumb stuff. Or even a 1v1 where you're like 60% health over your enemy and then you kind of start trolling around. Next thing you know, you've lost and you're kind of like, well, this is all. <laughs> GG, very nice pickup by the red team. Uh, as much as I do love Baku, this comp, I feel Baku, if he's going to be with anyone that you want to be with damage, like potentially like a Jade, he's good at being aggressive. I think if you want to be aggressive, maybe go Rook, because he's a bit strong, especially with the armor break. Um, but I just don't think it's working with him and Lucy. You know, if you could play him with Jade or something, or even Varus himself, you know, you could either defend him or you two just go ham and you put the damage down, or even with another melee champion potentially. But him and, Luli him and Lucy. Just there just isn't enough damage going down here, especially with the counter believes. Varus played quite nice, landing most of his actual wujus here. He does actually miss out on that, and we have to remember that when he does when he does miss out, that's 12 seconds. He's pretty vulnerable, especially at early game when he doesn't actually have enough energy to use his R ability. Once again, red team do pick up middle wall, and this is going to be important as they look to take this here. Does get bashed in the wall, but unfortunately a bit of split focus. Panic does go on to Varus, and this is the the thing here is, is that they really need to be focusing on one target down. They're struggling <laughs> if they, they keep splitting here she's just gonna actually get healed up they haven't been able to break the link as far as makes nice there and that's where we actually do see him land both hits of his wuju which is really deadly as he gets a nice stun in there and it looks to be taking this round and moving on to the quarterfinals for our red team team Frepo. the blue team are dragging it out potentially it could be turned around it only takes one mistake you miss that one ability with our ultimates coming up lucy's ultimate is ready Let's we'll see if she can actually make anything happen out of this. Middle Orb is up again with 50 seconds away from Sudden Death. We haven't actually seen a round going to Sudden Death. As she does actually completely whiff her ultimate here. It looks like the red team are going to easily secure this in a 3-0. Landing a nice Shatter ability. 
with any amount of time. We're about with five seconds, we're actually going to enter sudden death for the first time this tournament by the looks of things. As he does actually miss, he only gets one charge, a nice dodge by Baku, his ultimate is up. The fact this is what I was talking about, this is the first time we've seen him use his ultimate. He did use his R ability for the shield at some point, but the fact that he's only getting his ultimate after two minutes, it just really isn't going to be good enough. And that's GG, an easy, an easy win for our red team here. Very nice. So Ploma and Varus worked out really well. I'm a big fan of him. The Ploma it worked quite nicely. I just don't really feel that Baku and Lucy just there was just wasn't any damage there unfortunately. So that is Team Crepper who advanced. Unfortunately we're gonna see Team Bob going home for today. Poor poor Team Bob. So I will bring up the brackets once again for you bosses and we can chill out for a couple minutes and wait for the next party to be uh set up. Uh, GG There is always a turn there. Yeah. There is always a turn, that's for sure, man. So very nice. So that is we're gonna be moving on to our quarterfinals next. We're going through the tournament pretty quickly, which is nice to see. I guess maybe, I don't know, do we want to be having longer games? I guess the longer games mean it's a bit tighter, but um, sometimes the short games we do like a stomp. <laughs> so we're literally just waiting on our bottom and top teams. Big Birthman, hello. Looks like it's gonna be and TS Boys and MK team to see who actually gets the victory out of that. Nice. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> I'm sorry that the text hurts your eyes, man. That's not my intention. If you prefer, I will um, turn it off for, for the next tournament. Ah, uh, I'm looking at it now, it actually hurt my eyes. Make a steel image. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. I think we should be able to, uh, to do. There we go, let's go. Yeah, uh, and now we're actually, when I, when I made it, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool, but yeah, look at it now. <laughs> it doesn't, it's making my eyes pretty shattered. I feel sorry for you guys. Okay, let's go. Alright, so we're literally probably about 2-3 minutes away for the next round. We're just waiting for the final team to finish it off. Maybe they're actually having the, uh, the long game. Also, once it's, so we're probably maybe about half an hour, I imagine, and the, or the, 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 the final, I believe the semi-final is actually a best of three. So the team that wins the first game, they will actually have to play another game. We're not talking about rounds here. But the final for sure is the best of three. And after that, we'll probably play a little bit of league, and then the uh, NA tournament get underway at midnight. Also, uh, I'm actually being a bit of a, a noob, there's a surprise. We're actually in the semi-finals right now. The way I was looking at the brackets was that I was looking at it as the quarterfinals and semis and final. Uh, the way it's actually going to be is that we were in the quarterfinals, and now the two teams move in, which would take us to the semis and then into the finals. That was my, I was interpreting the brackets wrong. My apologies, so yeah, we're going to be getting underway pretty shortly.
Okay, we have all the results in now, so yep, just two more minutes bosses and we'll be getting the semi-finals. So the semi-finals is a best of three, so again, whoever wins the first game will have to play our second game. Potentially we could actually have three full games and same for the final. I haven't actually, I think maybe we saw one game actually, we saw one game of Shifu, he was very popular last week, so we haven't seen him too, we haven't, yeah, just one game in the Mortal Castle, we've actually only seen him, and it didn't go too well, him and the Croak combo just wasn't really working out. Potentially it could have worked out, but it was always going to be hard, they make that one mistake, they don't land their count abilities, they get at the wrong time, it's always going to go in style points, but unfortunately it just didn't work out. Okay, alright, results are in then. So we're going to be seeing Big Bertha take an in-cap OP Baby Rage. So we did lose Baby Metal along the way somewhere. Baby Metal... We lost them a long time ago, never mind. Team Capo are going to be facing off against the MK team for our semi-finals. Okay, it uh, looks like we're ready. We'll just jump it back into game. We're just waiting on someone to add me. Cheers, man. How did your game go? It looked like you got knocked out in the first round, eh, man? So the game we're going to be common casting over right now is actually Big Bertha vs. Incap OP a Baby Rage. I'm just waiting to uh, play that. Try and add it myself. Once I've been done, you have to do it yourself, eh? Yeah, uh, sounds about right here, man. You gotta blame someone else. Sadly, I wasn't there with you, man. We gonna had it down. Alright, literally, probably about a minute, and it looks like he has, so you just wait for him to bite me in and we'll be able to get underway bosses for our, our semi final of the uh, Q2. Again, if you guys didn't you miss out and you want to get involved in next week's Q3, the register will be opened. Um, the register will open on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming. Okay, here we go. Sweet! Semi-finals then, guys. So this is the best of three. We're going to be certainly action-packed. So once again, this is going to be Big Bertha versus Incap OP Baby Rage. Potentially, we'll have to wait and see. Can you read his mind? How do you know this? Can you see him on Freya? We haven't seen any uh, Freya just yet, so it'd be cool to see see her. I think she's a really strong champion. We've seen some, she's made some really big plays in our top 5 play series. And the uh, freebie one she took on, getting that constant counter, the fact she can counter, counter a projectile, pull the enemy in towards her and also gets a shield from it is pretty damn strong. Uh, so what goes on after the tournament finishes? then is it's just going to be a sad time, hey man. So we have this one, best of three, then we have the final best of three, so we're probably about half an hour yeah. more of games. Uh, and then I'm going to jump onto some League. I might have a couple games of Battle Rite because I need to do some quests. Um, and then we'll jump on the League and then we'll have the uh, Midnight Tournament. So that's going to be NA for the NA guys. That starts at midnight. So 12pm. Uh, I'm not sure depending on wh wh where you're actually from. If you go onto the Play Tourney website, playtourney.com, it will actually have your time zone there. So you'll know when the, play uh, the American Tournament does actually start. So, But it's going to be midnight. Uh, I will post a countdown on my stream so you know when it's going underway keep you guys posted, but I will still be here, we'll still be streaming. Yeah, we'll probably be doing some normal, so you're more than welcome to join, man. So we are going to be seeing, I believe this is um, Taldo, who is a big streamer, we did actually watch him earlier, I imagine this must be him, I I, I can't remember, we see so many people, but I reckon that blue, that blue mount, man. I, I don't know, I really like my lava mount, like, that wall's in the way, bro. Like that. I really do like my lava mount, I don't know, it's just the fact that you don't see anyone, which makes that really cool, or if that is actually just cooler. I don't know, it's kind of like electric, it's pretty dope. So, anyway, getting into our semi-final, we're going to see Big Bertha vs. Incap OP, we're going to be with the 
Baku and Lucy once again. So this did not work out earlier. Uh, let's see how these two chums can pull it off. And we're going to be seeing the Croak and Jade, which if you guys remembered, we did see some really tight rounds of them, but the damage they pulled out was super strong. As Blue Team do actually secure the middle orb here with Croak trying to jump onto Lucy. Baku is split, and this is a good time to actually put some damage down as they combo really nicely their abilities. And unfortunately, with him being stunned already, he was unable to actually block Jade to become a snipe, which can be a pain in the ass as a Jade player. Get a nice silence off middle orb is literally about two seconds away from spawning up. He does actually nicely ultimate coming in and that is wow GG out of nowhere. It looked like the blue team I looked pretty even for a second then, but Jade was able to get a great timed ultimate off. Unfortunately Baku didn't have a shield up and Lucy really doesn't actually stand much of a chance here. Very nice take by the red team. And this is what we were talking about earlier that Lucy Baku, I I don't know, I'm a big fan of Baku, but I just don't see the damage, I don't see where the damage was going to come from. As you saw, Baku then got absolutely deleted, eating all four shots of Jade's ultimate. Oh, that tasted nice. We had to pull, pull those bullets out all night long. GG! So we are going to be seeing, so Jade is actually going to be running for the stealth build, um, so her first ability. Uh, which is this one? So it means she can actually take. Un she doesn't take any damage with the first, second, ender in stealth, which is really nice, especially against Croak. If you time it right, you can actually uh, block his ultimate, uh, the tick from Venomwind, and then also the uh, through the shadows, which gives her some additional attack speed, which is very nice. So we unload in those clips, and again, this is the importance I want to point out is actually cancel those abilities instead of using any that. Starts at 10 seconds. If you just by pressing your C button, you could also hotkey it yourself. You can cancel that, which is pretty huge to be honest. You know, imagine if you were able to play other mobiles and cancel your abilities, it would be um, godlike. It would be, it would be really broken to be honest. But in this game, you know, it works out really nicely, and it makes for that top level play. As we see, Jade and Croak currently split at the moment, and Lucy's a long way away from home, and Baku's just going to be eating damage here all day long, you know, generally you want to be focused on the support, but what you want to keep in mind is if the tank is actually split from them in this situation here, they were able to actually pop him down and he's already eating big bullets. He does actually get a nice shield off, which means Jade has to actually turn away her ult, but it isn't really going to make much of a difference here as Croak does land a double venom and take them on both ones. Jade does actually pick up the middle orb, which is going to look like it's going to be GG, and the red team taking round two here. So actually have a big turnaround, they are making a bit of a meal out of this, a good bit of a cleaner. Oh nice, star points there, 360 no scope, I like it. Right on his mouth, he's in the sword. GG, really nice play by the red team. Again, I, I think what happened there, you have to watch out when you're Baku, obviously you know, he has good charges, but even if he does land these charges and he goes in and whatever, I just don't see Lucy putting the damage out, and you know, she's more intent on healing them up and you know, she put what? Well, you know, she's never going to be the one who does the damage. I think maybe something like that. So earlier, Baku and Jade would be better, but see, they, maybe they uh, decide to mix things up going into the next round. But this Croak and Jade combo is certainly putting it, certainly putting some damage out. I do love Baku, so I'm, I'm sorry, I just feel he needs someone more than, you know, Lucy, I think she's a strong champion in her own right, but I just don't feel this actual comp here is actually doing them any favours. Once again, Jade, you know, see here, she's actually cancelled her a snipe three times now in a row. That's just, uh, that's pretty damn impressive. I don't know if that's just broken or what, but it's working out nicely. I think it's really cool, again, just for the higher level plays that allows for that. As Baku does actually counter her incoming damage there this time. A bit of split focus, I really feel that they could potentially focus down Croak, but again, he's just such a slippery character, it's really going to be hard for them. But they have taken a nice lead here, middle orb's about 5 seconds away, and again, Lucy's just so far on the backside, you can see, this is what I talked about, she's healing Baku up, which, okay, you know, he's keeping them alive, but, you know, they're going to be doing more damage than what she's healing, and he's not putting out enough damage, and eventually it's actually going to cause them some issues, even with the sustain there. As he does land a nice win, win but a well-timed R, but he's coming in from Baku, he's going to keep this going, and it's just looking potentially in favour of the blue side, Jade has actually got her ultimate up, so Baku's going to be wanting to keep his shield up to see if she watches this and how this actually plays out. She land, goes to actually land a sniper ability, but missing this time. Baku landing another great, he's making really nice use out of Zara ability, this doesn't mean that he isn't going to be getting his ultimate as she does actually start unloading her ultimate, and wow, this is turning a little bit tight, a nice use of the wall here, but the 
red team are going to be able to pick up all the orbs on the outside of the map, which is going to heal them up and also bring them close again. Our ultimate is Crook's about 30% away from being able to get his momentum in once again. A nice, nice ball coming in is going to be counting us, and this is great use out of Baku's shield once again. But what I'm talking about is we're just not seeing any damage coming down. And once they get their ultimates, as Crook does actually love a double random win once again, I really feel that the blue team don't have much of a chance here. I feel Baku played this really well this round, it was spot on, he made great use of his R ability which brings out that big shield for him and his allies, it worked perfectly, but there was just no damage here, you know, the red team were able to get their ultimates many times, even though Baku was able to shield up some of it, blocked some nice shots, it just wasn't, it just wasn't enough unfortunately. So GG, the red team take this 3-0, again with this being a semi-final, this will be going into one more game, potentially two, so it's not over just yet. That was, um, yeah, just, I just don't really agree with it, as we saw before, the Baku and Lucy combo, in my opinion. I wonder they maybe they will stick with it, but I feel this Jaden Jaden Croak combo is proving really deadly. So we'll just wait for the next invite. Uh, again, it's going to be Big Bertha Storpus, Incap OP, Baby Rage. What a name. It's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, I just really feel like Baku shouldn't be going with a support, in my opinion, you know. Um, especially when he's up against two damage, obviously, at the moment. With then there being, like, no draft mode, I'm not sure if that would be something they do feature. Obviously, there's probably not really enough champions at the moment. Uh, you don't know who you are going against, but... Yeah, being, being with Lucy just isn't happening. I'd like to be proved wrong, but I don't think uh, that we will. Those muscles, beautiful. Such a cool alpha tester picture. Missed out being on the alpha, it feels bad. At least we're on the early access, which is cool enough to be honest. Being part of seeing this community grow, which is really cool, and you know, being able to um, bring this tournament to you bosses, free play tourney. Again, if you want to actually register to play tourney, if you want to be involved in next week's tournament, it's going to be next Friday, 7 p.m. for EU and midnight for NA. We will be still have the NA one to cast tonight, a couple of hours time. There is a $250 prize pool for the winners for NA and EU, so it's separate prize pools. The final is going to be on 11th of November, which I'll be casting. I'm going to be casting every round up until then. So you can register for next week's this uh, Tuesday coming. Replaytourney.com. You do have to make an account, um, and you can uh, go on there and then add your buddy in and make the party. 32 teams, we were full, I think there was about 6 teams overlapping, so uh, if someone doesn't actually make it, a team doesn't make it, then they will be replaced by the next team in the list. So, again, will we be seeing Lucy? They're going to be sticking with Lucy, but bringing out the damage, I prefer this over Baku, at least ship it, ooh, there you going for it, well, okay then, well, maybe we will be proven wrong, I hope so, um, well, here we go, I'm actually quite surprised they're sticking with this. really just don't, like, I feel Baku played it really well, you know, I take my hat off to him, they dodged a lot of the abilities in that final round, and he used his R to great use, can't, what, being able to soak up so much damage, and, you know, they, they looked okay for a second, but Lucy's just spent the whole time healing them up, and as soon as, uh, you know, okay, they can take their normal abilities coming in, they can block some shots, but as soon as Jaden Croak gets her ultimate, it's GG. I feel that's going to be the case again, but... We shall see. And again, this is a real great timing. Jade's been spot on with cancelling her snipes then, and she actually cancelled at a great time as she was able to use her cloak ability to avoid the incoming leap by Baku. But again, he's just getting beaten down here. There's just so much damage coming out from Jade and Croak that they can, they can afford to focus the tank, knowing that Lucy just isn't going to be able to do enough here. But a bit of split focus as the red team, I believe, did pick up middle orb then. A nice snipe coming in, really well timed, and she's already got her ultimate within 30 seconds of the game. And that's the big difference in landing those videos. Well, you actually see Baku making use this is the first time we've actually seen him use his heroic charge in these, uh, in these rounds, but unfortunately it comes to no use. She wasn't close enough for him to actually knock him into the wall, and she does get a nice ultimate with him eating about three of the shots there. She's landing Wind and Wind onto Lucy here, and it's going to be a little bit close, but again, I just don't feel that there's enough damage here. He does miss time his leap. Potentially, if he landed his leap, then 
I don't think we'd actually have been enough, but <laughs> potentially we'd have the hope. So it was, it was a nice try, he actually he was able to get his ultimate up himself, but unfortunately where he went all in there, a nice, what was that, a 720 no scope coming in from Jade? Uh, unfortunately, um, he was too far away from knocking onto the wall. Again, you know, she was kind of, uh, she would be full, she was about 60% health anyway, and without Lucy there, it wasn't happening, and she was able to turn around and unleash a good sort of three out of the four shots onto him, so GG. So currently at the moment, if the red team keep this up, they will be um, going into the final. Is it 720? I thought it was a 720. That's pretty close. Uh, we, we, we were saying 720, you guys agree with me on that? Oh, some star points right there. <laughs> got some high APM going on. <laughs> so, you can see the red team getting aggressive again, no hold bars. Nice, unfortunately for Baku, he does actually leap straight into Jade's sniper ability then, taking the big pounding red orb, the middle orb, is about to spawn. Potentially could go either way. Croak has put in, I believe the Bleed team actually did pick it up, but Jade's already put so much damage down, she's unleashing a nice ultimate. This does cause a bit of splash damage as well, and she does actually hit both targets. Another double when and win coming in, and I think this is going to be pretty much GG as we move on to potentially the final round of this matchup, the last semi final today. There's just too much damage coming in through. You know, I, I, I take my hat off. I feel Baku's played it pretty well. Uh, there isn't much more that Lucy, in my opinion, I'm not saying Lucy's done it bad or anything. You know, I think the blue team have done the best. I feel they've done well with what they've got, but I just don't feel there's any damage, you know. I just I just can't see anything else coming out of this. I'm quite surprised they decided to stick with it. I mean, fair enough, maybe that's what's got them into the semi-finals. Uh, but this Croak and Jade is... Uh, proving too deadly. And potentially could be our winners of this tournament as they're going to be moving on to the final unless we have a big turnaround. You know, they, uh, if, <laughs> if the blue team want to win this we'll have to win the next six rounds actually um, move into the finals but it could be done. I hope so. It'd be cool to see. Eh? There we go then. Bite. Jade, once again, a great time. And this is the problem is, Baku, he doesn't really have much option, you know, if he plays defensive, they're gonna, he's just going to get wrecked. If he goes aggressive, then, you know, Jade just times everything really well. Again, using the staff, that's twice now she's been able to avoid his actual leap. So, one, he doesn't do the damage, and two, he doesn't stun her. At this point, he then just takes a pounding to his face, Lucy's unable to heat him up, and, you know, they just make light work of it. A nice time stun there, but the thing, one thing I potentially I might actually like to see is when you do actually have your ultimate cancelled, if they cancel it, for example, then, just as Croak was about to ult, he, he got knocked into the wall, but I, I'm not sure if I really like it. I feel that because that happened, his ultimate should now be, it should be on, he should be on a 0% energy, but if you cancel it like that, he, you know, he can use his ultimate again in two seconds, which I don't really like. I, I I think the fact that you're actually able to cancel that ultimate, you know, whether it was on purpose or accident, I think it was done on purpose, then you know you should be punished for that. But that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, GG. Really nice team, the red team, I think well, it was 6 0, Lucy and Haku. <laughs> I did, 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 did say, I was quite surprised, or oh, I was quite surprised they stuck with it, but there we go. Uh, and the, the problem is with Baku just jumps in, you know, I, I don't really fault him. But he jumps in. Lucy can't get quick enough to follow him up. Plus, Croak just jumps on him, and uh, jumps on her even. And then you know, Baku just takes all this damage. Jade was timing his shield perfectly, and yeah, it was GG. So they are going to be moving into the finals. I will get up the bracket. So we're probably going to be a couple minutes away from um, from the actual finals. I will check and get back to you guys on the situation with that. I'll be about a couple minutes.
Okay, bosses, so situation with the final, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the other team that are playing are having a bit more, I don't know, I don't know, it was competitive, I'm not really too sure what's happening, but they've only played one match, they still potentially have another two to go, so we could be maybe, I don't know, five to ten minutes before the next, uh, before we actually move on to the finals, and that will be it. The winners of, the, of this tournament will then move on to... Um, the finals which will take the actual proper finals where the $250 prize pool is up for grabs and that's going to be on the 11th of November but again before then uh, for any of you guys that are interested in signing up it's playtourney.com you can um, join on there and come next Tuesday you'll be able to register for Q3 and then also there's going to be Q4 the next week I shall link it for you as well and make your life easier come on. Yeah, $250 prize pool, NA, EU and NA. Uh, NA again will be taking place at midnight. So we'll probably play some league uh, in between after this. So we'll probably be about that. So maybe half an hour left, I guess. And then we'll jump onto some league for a couple hours, an hour or two. And then it'll be midnight. It'll be brilliant. Like magic. Also, uh, for any guys that who have featured in this tournament, or maybe you missed part of the stream, I will be uploading the EU and NA one onto my YouTube channel tomorrow. You can actually uh, you can actually catch. I have the previous ones from last week up on my channel now. Uh, the NA and EU tournament. Also, any of my top five plays, if you guys haven't checked out, I do sort of probably about two top five plays every week, where you guys can actually send me your clips. So if you have some cool clips that you want featured, some sick plays, I'm always looking for beastie plays, just literally leave me a comment on my top 5 play video, either anyone with your battle right ID and also the post name, the replay name. If you don't know how to post, it's in the top right hand corner, there's a little play button, you go on there, you go post a play or edit a play, click on that, cut your play down, save, nice and easy. Battle right have got their replay system down. You know, for what it is for early access, it's so cool, and I can only see um, so much cooler things coming with it. It annoys me playing League for so long. You know, Paragon's just come out. They had a replay system straight away. Why did League? I just, I just, uh... why? Beastie Cliff, eh? That's why I like to hear dreams, man. I hope so. I don't know if that's. <laughs> I don't know if you were talking about battle or not, but yeah. either way, send it in, bro. I'll check it out. Yeah, I think Craig's really good at sort of just, I think he's really good in 3v3 free free because he's just annoying, you forget about him, he's leaping all over the place and then his stout, you know, he has, he has so much mobility and also the chance to reposition and if timed right, you know, he can go in and stun his target if your team can actually follow that up and I, one thing which I was amazed by as we saw, not so much in that round or that game, but the previous game where we saw the Croak and Jade combo, Croak landed I think two, um, two ultimates where he, it was against the Oldor, Oldor and Asuka, I thought that the blue team were actually going to win that, but he landed twice, he landed this deadly, yeah. went and win Oldor right. and just absolutely okay. wrecked, okay. I was yeah. blown away by the damage, sure. Maybe not, well, uh, maybe that's the best kind, eh? <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, again, there's, if any of you guys are joining now, a couple more minutes, maybe five minutes, I don't know. The, the uh, guys that are playing are having a bit of a longer game than the one we just watched, so, um, see what happens. I'm just really surprised that uh, the um, blue team then stuck with the Baku and Lucy after the, how the first round went. Maybe they weren't even watching the show. I don't, I don't know if they like they potentially that might be in their company running the whole game. They're trying to go with it, but you know, it did nothing the first round, but delayed the a little bit. And uh, there's a second case in the second round as well. Hodor, yeah, we actually saw some meme many about um, Hodor as Hodor.
Yeah, yeah. all right. More good, more good. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, again, also um, after this, probably do some League of Legends. Uh, read some fan games. So anyone who actually wants to play has an EU account. Do you play League or not? Uh, you're more than welcome to join. And um, then have the uh, NA one at midnight. So, the first game has only just finished, uh, Team Capo, I've been informed, have actually taken that. It has come up on... has come up lost, maybe they've actually won. I think they might actually be won. Okay, it looks like potentially we're going on to the final. Maybe I've been misinformed. Let's have a look. I think we're ready. Yeah, alright. Okay, okay, yeah. League is great. I, I, I've, no, I've played League for years and I have a big heart for League, but I must admit I've spent a lot more time recently on Battle Rite, but um, yeah, this is the final now. This is the final, so about, I don't know, depending on how long it goes, you know, it could be maybe 10, 20 minutes. And then there will be, for any of you guys that are still awake, uh, if you're from EU, we have the NA1 at midnight, so that is what, four hours away? Four hours away. So, have the double fan, the fans. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really love LoL and it's just thought oh, I place my heart, but I think Battle Right just real nails nails on the top of the head, you know, quick games, you're like generally the maximum time for a game is ten minutes. And yeah, it's so easy. You know, two V two, three V three is the perfect size, you know, at least got one friend I can play with, which is really nice. You haven't got over, you haven't got to wait on a whole team, you know, if you make a mistake it's down to you, you know or you with your buddy I guess, you know. You can't be blaming everyone else for it, which I've always hated for Lee, because Always someone holding you back on League. Well, maybe I'm holding the team back. Who knows? Maybe it was me all along. But, um, yeah. yeah. All right. So the okay. final okay. is uh, yeah. Team yeah. Capo versus MK Team. Oh, no. I think. No. Sorry. 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 Take everything back. This is not the final. This is not the final. Scrap everything I have said. This is the semi final. Okay. My apologies. This is still the semi final. So what we're doing is watching. The second semi-final, because their games are actually taking so long, we're actually able to watch the second game. So Team Kepo did actually take the first one here. My apologies, I kind of got a bit confused. So we're going to be seeing Old or and Rook, first Rook of the game, coming against Sirius and Pearl. So this is actually we, the only champion we've seen so far is Older, who is running a very fancy yeah. skin, man. How do I get a hold of that? Look at this little ball of sand. Oh, he looks gone. So we see him, Rook going. I'm a big fan of Rook, one of my favorite champions. The fact that he hinted at that Berserk ability, as we're going to see now, uh, he, with his three charges, he can land his armor break, which we've just seen. Which at the moment, because Older isn't actually following this up, he hasn't actually done too much damage here. As they're really split, split focus, and I just noticed it's two supports. So this is the first time in either tournament we've actually going to see two supports here. Rook does use his armor break to pick up the middle of them. Very nice, as we are taking a big heal. So the thing we have to watch here is Sirius does actually use his ultimate here, not really making too much use out of it, <laughs> flying all over the place with his counter abilities. Uh, it's looking quite interesting, so the two are going to be able to heal themselves up quite well, but are they going to have enough damage? I feel that as Rook does actually use his ultimate here, Shatner down, this is a nice big amount of damage, but again, they're kind of split focus, but we are seeing Pearl taking a big hit here. Rook does come charging in, they really want to force down the issue of getting Pearl down here. She does actually well timed, they counter out her counter ability, which is really nice to see. This is something you want to be watching out for is waiting for them actually to use their abilities and being able to wait them out as we saw here. And this is the problem, we've just not really seen the damage, even though a second goal of this game coming up with this. And Pearl and roll, this potentially the red team could be turning this around as Rook has actually dropped here and I don't think Older is actually going to be able to win this 2v1. Very well played by the red team here, I didn't see that. And this is actually turning in probably to be the best round we've watched yet. Very exciting. 
they were able to wait out their ultimates. Pearl actually summoned the Jaws and put out some big damage, but Aldo is actually dropping her low. The problem here is Sirius is kind of toying with the idea they are going to actually drop him. Uh, the thing is, though, this is what we talk about is the 2v1, some people they kind of just wait out, and next thing you know, your buddy's dropped, and you're like, oh god, the press is the end, the sudden death's coming in. And uh, yeah, GG. So that is actually um, the first round. So remember the uh, red team, Team Capo did actually take the first game, so this is the second game, this is still the semi-finals, the finals will be coming up next, but big damage, oh, that, I think that was the most exciting round we've actually watched in this tournament so far, that was, that was a big hype, a big hype, so, Oldor and Rook, seeing it like a deadly combo, but I think that the issue here was what I was talking about, Rook I think can be so deadly and I think that comp can work, you know, I, I, no reason why it couldn't work, but uh, Rook, I got like two big armor breaks, onto Pearl, I think it was on Cirrus maybe actually, but Aldo just wasn't able to follow up, you know, there's no reason why he should be attacking Pearl, you know, Pearl isn't going to be able to lock him down in place, she doesn't really have any massive form of CC there, so that split of split focus I think actually did cost them in the end, because they were, they were looking pretty strong, but with two elements coming in by the red team did actually take that round. So middle orb, it has just spawned and this is going to be important to see who actually does take this, as he uses Voltorce to actually displace them, very nice. Rook coming in, a nice charge. He is actually, they, again, I feel what we're having issue, some issues here is they can't really make up their mind who they want to go. Again, Rook's putting in some real nice damage, but we're just not seeing older actually following up, who does actually use his ultimate to come in here. It does look like they are going to be dropping him. Real big ultimate coming in by Rooks, landing all three big hits then, and that ultimate could be deadly. She Pearl does actually pick up her teammate's soul, which is going to grant her ultimate. She is actually going to whiff this one, unfortunately. I think even if she did land it, it would have been a lot of luck to turn this around as the blue team look like they're going to be taking this to one apiece. What an entertaining game we're having here. I love a rug. I love his little me card. I hope that uh, with his fish skin that they, they change it so when he actually throws it out, instead of him throwing out a bit of meat, that he actually throws out his fish. That would be so cool. So, um... It's 1-0 at the moment, currently I'm 1-0 uh, to Team Capo. I'm not actually sure off the top of my head who Team Capo is at the moment. Um, but it's one round to them, so it's actually currently one game, this is a best of three. So this potentially could go to um, another game, but I'm just not actually 100% sure which team is which. As Poe is dragging us out, but Sudden Death has come in, she doesn't really stand much chance. So taking it to one apiece, very nice play by the blue team. We were able to pick up that middle orb, again because of that it allowed to build up their energy so much quicker than the uh, red side that they get their ultimates, and it's GG, very nicely played. That's one apiece, what a game we're having so far. Okay, so Team Capo is actually our blue team. So it's the red team. The red team need to win this if they want to take it to another round. Uh, they obviously did so shines in the first round of potentially doing it, but again, I really feel that the blue team, the only reason they actually lost that first round was because they just split focus, which they were doing slightly here, but again, Rook making some big charges, and he just brings his stun, and you know, if you actually look at his charge, the range on it is just insane, as he starts putting some damage onto Pearl here. He does actually waste his counter ability, but it doesn't look like it's going to cost him too much here. With middle orb about a couple of seconds from coming up, the blue team did actually secure it last time, and I think that proved it was a big issue. See, no one actually going for it at the moment. Has actually dropped low. Red team do pick this up. Pearl was able to sneak a slight aura attack in there, which is gonna could potentially be the difference here. As we see them kind of whittling down again, a lot of split focus. But Sirius is very low at the moment. But I can see Brooks deciding to go on Pearl. He does actually land. Unfortunately, he's kind of not making much use of his armor break at the moment. He's using his Right, a mouse blow ability too soon. We did actually see last time him making some nice armor breaks, but this time it hasn't been so good. Does land all three hits on his ultimate, kind of a split of the damage, but it is going to be enough to keep the enemy team low. And blue team do just somehow. Older actually, I thought Pearl was going to get away with taking that then, but Older does actually land a sneaky auto tag and pick up the orb for the blue team here. As both teams are running slightly low. A nice ultimate coming in, and we have to remember that his ultimate does actually heal his allies, so he puts some nice damage in and actually heal on Pearl up at the same time. So it doesn't look like it's going to be enough, as Pearl's dropped low to about 30% health. Rook was again landing a nice charge in, again using his counter, but he does actually have his armor break up here, and this is a difference here, look at that. But unfortunately, again, Pearl did actually land a, she placed a really good displacement bubble, which meant that Older's auto attacks just weren't able to follow. Uh, for any of you guys unaware, once it goes in there, those abilities are slowed down, which has kept her alive, and they're kind of taking this one out. We're about 10, 15 seconds away from going into 
sudden death, but Rook's ultimate is up again. He is petrified, which is going to delay, which is nice because there was actually an armor break there. And a deadly ultimate onto Pearl, but a wild time counter is actually able to cheat it out. But she is under 50, she was able to heal herself up to 50 health at the moment as we have entered sudden death. See how this plays out as he's taking the top side. This really could go either way as the uh, red team do actually have the heals with both supports here to kind of take themselves through this. Rook is at the arena and is about to actually start closing in here. So we'll see how this actually pans out now. Middle orb is about to spawn. I think this could be big, especially with Oldor. He actually does actually have his ultimate ready right now. And we'll see how this pans out. Unfortunately, Rook's boulder toss doesn't actually make any use out of this. He, if he times this right, a nice knockback is actually going to knock Sirius out of the arena. He does unfortunately miss his boulder toss. As Pearl looks to be dropped down here, and I feel that the blue team are going to take this to 2-1 to one at the moment. They do secure middle orb. Very nice. The arena is closing, and he doesn't have much space to run now. And well played. I love you, Bolter Toss. GG. So, for any of you guys that are unaware, after two, two minutes is our sudden death. Once, to, once the timer, which is two minutes long, hits... Zero, it goes sudden death, at this point the arena gets smaller and smaller, if you're outside of the circle, you will take damage, um, as you saw there, he did actually get killed from being knocked out of the arena, so GG. That was pretty damn hectic. So if blue team, our team Capo, do actually win this one, they will be moving in onto the final. Uh, I do feel the. I did, I'm not. I'm unsure how I actually feel about this at the moment. I think the red had the sustain, but I don't feel they had the damage. You know, Rook's been absolutely on point on this. He's really, really making some big plays. He's landed some nice boulder tosses. His charges have been on point, and also his armor breaks have been on point. But I just don't feel Older's actually been in there at the same position to follow up. I feel the game could be a. The, the rounds could be a little bit shorter if he was actually there to be packing the damage. And it's going to be interesting to see if these two do make it. If we're going to see the Croak and Jay, Croak and Jay versus Older and Rook, it's certainly going to be interesting because. They've been putting out some big damage, but this comp seems to be working quite nicely. Rook's able to tank things up, Older's able to heal them up, and Older does put out some nice damage, and especially if they can follow up those armor breaks. Big hits coming in, they should really pick him up here. Nice counter ability, but I think he's only delay on time. As he is written in place, a nice cancel on uh, his, uh, his charge. He does actually land some nice damage with his ancestral beam, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They are dropping Rook slightly low, but I think it's only a matter of time before. Our red team get dropped here. He does actually whiff to his ultimate. He gets one slight hit on there, but potentially that could be the difference. As Pearl lands a nice petrifier onto Older, it is actually going to leave Rook on the bottom side of the map. If they can blow him up, they're going to have to try and whittle him down quick enough, but unfortunately they're not able to. If now is the chance. He does unfortunately miss his uh, charge in, but I don't think it's going to cause too much of issue with Older being almost full health now. Healing up Rook very nicely, and Blue Team do actually secure middle orb once again. He's actually wasted his armor break ability then. Older's ultimate actually he's decided to use something else. Sirius down, Pearl doesn't really have much of a chance, her ultimate is ready, we could see a big ultimate, she could actually wait for him to charge in right now and drop it down, but with her being stunned for so long, she does actually get it off, so we have to remember her ultimate doesn't actually do all that much damage, to be honest, it's really nice if you can combo with someone like a Mascar, you can, the fact that you can see where they're spitting out, you can combo some CC or some damage onto that, it can be deadly, but on its own it really doesn't do all that much damage, unless you see the clip on Reddit where she actually got uh, three ultimates off in a row, that was pretty damn impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Red team, I hope it actually did secure the middle wall, but once again, a nice boulder toss is actually going to knock her out of the arena, and GG. So the blue team did win, as um, I was a little bit confused at first with the semi-final situation, so this was the semi-final, blue team wins, so that means team Capo move on to the final to be taken on our Jaden Croak from last round. Also, on a quick side note, uh, I did mention about registering for the tournament, um, for next week's tournament, that you couldn't do it until Tuesday. You can actually uh, register for the tournament right now. I will get the link for you. And, uh, so if you want to register for the EU tournament, you can register right now. But yeah, very nice play by the... Uh, that was an exciting game. I think that was um, I think the best one we won. We actually watched. Uh, cancel that. Don't, don't count the lobby you want to go to. Uh, that one, sorry. GG. So we'll uh, take us to have a quick look at the brackets. We're literally just going to wait for the uh, round to be built up. Yep. 
GG. So yeah, a couple minutes guys and we'll be into the final. Then I'll play a little bit of League whilst we wait and then we will be, uh, the NA tournament will be taking place at midnight. Yeah, really, that was a really fun game to watch. It was uh, quite close. I, again, I just feel that the two sports was quite interesting, but they just really lacked the damage. I feel if Brook and Oldor played it a little bit better. If they were if their synergy was, you know, as they were a bit more closer together when he was going in. Um, you know, they played it well, don't get me wrong, but I feel that uh, they could have probably ended the rounds a little bit quicker. You know, he drew, drew him on for a little bit, but nonetheless, it was a nice play, and I'm going to be I'm big hyped to see how this uh, next round actually goes, as we're going to have in-cap OP Baby Rage, who was our, our Jaden Croak, who we've seen twice already, bringing out some big game. Bring the Croak's damage with those ultimates have been deadly. Jade's been on point. She, you know, she seems to have made some impressive cancels with her stun ability, and also landed some nice stun. We even saw the 180, uh, 720. Uh, midnight is my time zone, which is England. Um, so, that, yeah, I'm not sure. UK, uh, which is four hours. Four hours away. Uh, yeah, four hours. GMT, I believe that's right. I could be chatting absolute yabba yabba. Yeah, we're just waiting for the round to be built, and then we'll be able to jump into the final, guys. Hype, hype, hype. Yeah, Rook, yeah, I, no, I do agree. Rook made some nice use of his boulder toss, you know, both being, um, well, they weren't running, yeah, they just didn't really have the range, yeah, that's true. Okay, it looks like we might actually have you ready to jump in. Well, maybe not. Okay, I think we're literally about a minute away from the final guys, we'll just wait for the invite to come back out and we'll jump in. So this once again is going to be a best of three, so as the way last one worked, whoever takes game one will then have to play another game to be our winners. And whoever and the winners will actually move on to the bigger finals, which is the 11th of November, which I'll be casting on the Friday at 7 p.m. for EU, and then midnight um, midnight will be the NA finalists from the previous round, and that's for a $250 prize pool for both regions. Lost out streaming, eh? Should have been uh, should have ended myself and kicked some ass. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I'm just finding out. I thought we were actually ready to go, but maybe not. Uh, we're probably about a minute or two away from the final, guys, so we can grab some popcorn. Get ready for our big hypes. Now, oh, here we go. Here we go. Sweet! So, our finalists today are going to be. Team Cop Team Capo Us She computes the AI again for the moment. Right, literally just waiting for them to Turn all the settings, make sure that the admin are happy and we'll be able to get the uh, final underway. Wow, well, thank you very much. You're a kind gentleman. So we have Team Capo versus Incap OP Baby Rage. I love it, the icons, man. They need to. Uh, I love it, well played. That's very nice. Is this, do they know this when they made their team names? That's perfect. It kind of makes sense. I thought well, they, they think the team names were a bit weird at first, but maybe it makes sense now. I, I see. I see it. It's all kind of like so. It's going to be the case then. We're going to see it. We're going to see Jaden Crow against my man Rook and Oldor. 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 Big hype. Our final best of three for Q2. The winners of this will be going on to the 11th November final for $250, which I can't wait. We already had uh, Condemned, who was number one actually on the EU servers. We had around about 5,000, 
and a half MMR, 5,500 MMR or something. I'm like around 3,000 MMR and it just, I'm getting like 5 points to win. I don't know how I'm ever going to get up to that. It's going to take forever. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why, I guess. Oh, okay. I'm a bit disappointed actually. It looks like they're going to be changing up to Shifu and Pearl. I was I was hoping for the Rook and Older. I, I'd be actually sad to... I hold that up. Yeah, it's not going to be. I'm quite disappointed. I am disappointed. For sure. They broke my heart. I was really looking forward uh, to seeing the um, Older combo. Older and Rook, that was going to be some big hype. I feel, I feel a broken man right now. I, I, after watching them play that round real nicely, we're going to actually see Shifu. Who we, I, I think we actually saw what we saw one game earlier with Croak. Shifu was a popular pick in last week's tournament. Uh, see, um, so Shifu was actually condemned. They were the winner. And I think the NA team... Um, the NA team actually uh, won with Shifu in the end. So we're gonna have in cap, in cap OP Baby Rage. That's gonna be our red team, and the blue team is gonna be Team Kepler. Best of three, ladies and gentlemen, for our final. Who's gonna be taking them on to for the two hundred fifty dollar prize pool, which is gonna be taking place on the eleventh of November? Hype, hype, hype! So coming in. We're going to see Pearl on her Molten Warhound mount against the Electric... Is it Electric? It's an Electric Molten Molten Warhound mount? Well, it's not Molten. Molten. I don't know what it is. So cool, though. Fire vs. Electric. Beastly. So we're going to see some big trades coming in. Con Shifu does actually waste his Conjure ability here as they're kind of trading blows. Middle Orb is up. Jade's thing when you have to actually watch with Jade. If you literally auto-attack it once and then Jade uses a sniping ability, she's able to easily pick up the Middle Orb, especially the fact that it can go through um, opponents. It allows her to easily actually secure those. So always be careful when Jade's sniping ability is up that you don't attack the Middle Orb because you just allow for her to take it so quickly. We already see her use the hammer ult already on these awful shots on the Shifu. And well, that, that's going to be GG. They're going to be using our blue team are going to be taking this first round quite easily here. It's only going to be a matter of time before they actually drop Pearl. Real nice plays, and this is what I'm saying here is that the synergy between Croak and Jade is pretty spot on. Croak's landing some nice stuns with his shift ability, and I actually incapacitate her there, so that actually lasts for around about two to three seconds. And during that time, if you do attack, you will break it, but the way they're working it is that they allow Jade to 100%, she can't miss a snipe, she probably could even do another 720, and um, by, by then hitting that, she's then stunned for even longer, taking all that big damage, and it's GG, so a real nice take by the um, blue team there, very well played. I'm just disappointed that they didn't actually r roll the uh, Rook and Oldor. I'm hoping they switch it up for next round. No, I don't want the ass to get handed to them, but you know, I'm just saying, come on, record or man, it's got to be. So, charging in, we have the uh, blue team, Jade has actually missed her sniping, Shifu does actually land a nice conjure bit here, we'll see how they actually decide to focus this, as Shifu is really trying to pop down Jade, with the silence here, he does actually get some nice damage, one thing you have to remember that the, um, with those three charges there, by him actually auto attacking, he charges up that right mouse button, so he wants to get more charges to do that additional damage, and I'm already putting some big damage down on here. And we have to remember that the red team do have the healer here, so if they play this well, I really feel at the moment with this command and lead they have with uh, Jade already under 30% health here, I really can't see the um, red team losing this round now. And it's going to have to take some big, unfortunately, yeah, Pearl does actually whiff her ultimate then, and it would have been a second earlier for sure Jade would actually be caught in that, but she was able to uh, assault over that one this time. But still, she is dropping low. She does actually pick middle orb up, but what I was saying, you have to watch out for that sniper ability. A nice conjure ability coming in by Shifu. But he is actually dropping quite low, and potentially we could see a nice sort of a nice spin to win, I like to call it. And it looks like, uh, I think, Croak, with his ultimate down, he's going to struggle to turn this around. He is going to maybe potentially pick up both these green health orbs. He has actually lost out on those. And this is going to take it one apiece. An exciting final we're having here already. I love it. Sudden death. We have it ended sudden death. Camouflage this isn't going to save you here, buddy. And a, a big spike to the heart coming in by Shifu. GG, well played. So we're actually going to see. Uh, I think that was the first round we've seen this uh, Jade, Jade and Croak lose. Yeah, I do agree. That was a bit of a bad communication. Also, just uh, all four players in this game right now are rank 14, and they have 5,000 MR, 5,000 MMR plus. So. Big hype. We are, we are, we are still going to be having an interesting couple of rounds left and obviously going into the next round and potentially another game as well on top of that. 
but see, I, I, I do agree. I think it was a bit of poor miscommunication. But I feel that the thing is here, if, if Croak and Jade really don't line it up with Shifu there, uh, this is the difference with actually having where we saw the Baku with a support. Obviously, he didn't have Pearl with him, but the Shifu is able to put enough damage out on him and uh, constantly Pearl's able to heal him up. As he has actually got Jade caught on the corner here, she does use her ability to knock him away. Red team do pick up middle orb here, as Pearl does actually use something else instead of her ultimate. Jade's making nice use of a mount to actually reposition and she potentially, I'm not sure why she didn't actually pick up both orbs then which could have been, would actually allow her to have her ultimate right now but big damage coming in from Shifu, these hits he's making, he's making sure to actually have his weapon fully charged as he goes in there and it looks like the red team will pick up, the blue team did actually see that one in there, was a nice uh, root coming in by Croak. Shifu's ult is up again, we have to watch out, he wants to he wants to time this well because with Croak with both his leaps down, this is perfect time for him to actually use his ultimate as Jade doesn't actually make too much with her uh, ultimate herself. Nice world of win and that was perfectly timed there. The thing we had to watch out for, Croak that she already used both his leaps and uh, Shifu timed that very nicely. Jade's really going to be able to do it here. Shifu's been pretty spot on. He, he's landed some nice javelin tosses and also uh, his ultimate. Well timed, you know, many, most people, especially at lower MMR, would have just popped their ultimate straight away then and Croak with the double dash would have just easily laughed in his face. And when you miss your ultimate, especially at high MMR, uh, it could really cost you the game. So GG, very nice. Taking it to the, taking it to the uh, blue team. So they did actually pick up the first round. I did forget about that. Very exciting final we're having on our hands, so this is a best of three still, so there's plenty of chance for the uh, blue team, if they do actually lose this round, to turn it around. Will they switch up their team comps? I'm hoping we do see Rook and Oldor, but with a winning comp of uh, Pearl and Shifu, they may stick with this one. But come on, Rook Oldor, come on, Bruce. Enlighten me. Yeah, alright. Okay, okay, yeah. Mm. Okay, coming in then. Two minutes on the clock. We have, I think we've only actually seen one sudden death get r pretty much close into the middle arena. I'd like to see one where we like literally hit to the final spot would be pretty fun. Again, Jay, this is why I really want to pinpoint for any of you guys that are interested in playing Jay, is actually cancelling that snipe ability if you know you're not going to hit it because it puts it back on the full cooldown instead of actually wasting it where you know you have to wait for 10 seconds again to use it. Use it. So big damage coming in. Trade him blow for blow, but a bit split, split focus here. I feel at this point, with her being oh, a real big snipe, and this is the difference here. We haven't actually seen Jade land too many snipes this game, and that that was huge right there. But she is under 40% of health herself, and we're in on the one toe. But Shifu does pick up middle orb, really nice, and a big stun coming in. This is what actually won the blue team the first round. Croak should be able to finish off Pearl. They're going to have to pick this up quickly, as Jade's actually looking like she's going to drop to... Uh, she threw in the top right hand corner, he did actually miss his Kundra ability which has allowed her to actually stay alive. She has picked up his ultimate as Croak and Pearl drop it on the bottom hand side. Tense moments coming in, a nice nice route and an ultimate combo, really nice. Jade is running low, she didn't actually have her ultimate, a big jab and toss but a bigger silence there, which is going to allow this battle to continue. We're about 50 seconds away from sudden death, I don't think we're going to get actually get there as these two foes battle it out. A nice ultimate coming in, but he does actually use his dash away. Jade has popped her ultimate here, does get some nice hits on the pearl, but not enough to drop her into another deadly snipe. I feel Shifu could really turn this 2v1, and this is, could be some big hype as well. Five seconds away. He does actually miss his jab and toss, and a well time cloak. This was a really nice play, and again that combo, and this was talking about, works out really nicely. Potentially with good conjure ability, that he could turn us around and see how this actually decides to play out. He has to watch out for that incoming participate with a stun combo, and I think that's going to be GG. Does land a nice conjure, but unfortunately does miss his world and blade, and he is going to be a goner. GG. I, I did think potentially that he could uh, turn that around, but unfortunately the combo we're seeing, which has worked, this is what won them the first round. Uh, Croak, I'm not actually sure the name of the ability, I believe it's one of his shift abilities. He uses in Contest State, which you know, keeps him rooted for two seconds. He's unable to do anything, and obviously damage breaks that, but the damage that breaks it is Jade Snipe, and that's just GG. Very nicely played. So that's going to take us to two apiece. Exciting times as we move into our final round for this round, round with uh, still potentially another two games to go. We're seeing them trade blow for blow once again. The problem here is even though they are split focused, 
they don't really have much other option and as Croak kind of goes for Pearl and Shifu kind of goes for Jade they're, they're sort of left to uh, bat out on their own command as Middle Orb is up once again and Jade does actually go for the snipe here but a nicely timed bubble by Pearl is actually going to play that and allow the uh, red time to pick it up she does actually prep her ultimate but misses every shot as a nice uh, stealth ability coming in by Shifu this potentially could really go anywhere at the moment Nice jamming toss, he is going to switch focus onto Croak, but a good spell block is going to deny him actually being able to finish him off there. As Croak leaps in for the middle of a nice bubble coming in once again by Pearl, but the knockback actually allows Red Team to pick it up. And another big ultimate coming in by Jade actually does drop Pearl under 20% health, but she's still alive. And potentially she does actually have her ult right now, this could be go either way. This is going to be tight. A, a nice, uh, nice dodge by... Jade then, if she actually landed her snipe onto Shifu, I think she would actually have killed herself. Nice leap out by Croak, and good use of the bubbles, this really is going to be tight, I'm not sure who's going to take this, I feel that the red team have this, as Jade does leap away, can she take a 2v1, another big leap, but another big knockback, as she does actually try to line up her snipe ability, she does pull it off, and she's looking to get middle orb, unfortunately Shifu, the final blow, she was literally one, one auto attack away from securing that there, she does actually be able to pick up one green health orb on the top side, floating around the top side with a nice silence coming onto Shifu. I'm unsure she potentially she's about 10% energy from picking her ultimate up right now. With a wild timed ultimate could really turn us around, but we have to watch out for Shifu's Kundra ability. A nice leap away and use of her stealth, but the arena closing in. This really could go anyway. She has, she actually does pick up middle orb, but I believe she used her ultimate for that. Nice Duke on his Kundra ability and the sign that's coming in. I think this is GG now. Or not. They, they hesitated for a second, but GG. Well played. What a tense uh, what a tense round. That was the best round we've actually uh, seen. Yeah, that, that really went down to the wire then. Jade, you know, she, she gave her all really, but it was always going to be hard to try and turn that 2v1 around. But well played. A great game. So we do actually see for the first time this tournament, Croak and Jade, I believe that was the first time we saw them lose a round, let alone actually lose the game. But we still, with this being a best of three, we're still going to have another game to go. Potentially two. I'm all game for more of that. That was uh, brilliant. So that's true. The grade 14, man. Look at that bad. Bad man. Love him. But yeah, I think I, I'm, it was a bit of miscommunication. Um, kind of hurt them a little bit. But yeah, it really could go either way. It'd be interesting to see if either teams uh, switch up. I was hoping we were going to see some Oldor and Baku. But with uh, Pearl and Shifu proven quite deadly then, I've imagined... Um, Imagine uh, they won't switch it up. All right then, straight in. What a round that was! That that really went down to the wire. wait for everyone to be ready, we're probably about a minute away and we'll be getting into round game two of our best three. For the final, again if you guys want to be featured in next week's Q3, which is going to be taking place on Friday, at the same time 7pm, you can actually register right now. No? Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know if you guys wanted music, okay. I just, um, I'll turn it off. I just know that uh, beforehand um, some of the guys asked if we could put music in, but if you guys feel that uh, you don't want it, then that's cool. No problem. So yeah, GG, that was um, real nicely played. I can't. I'm, I'm, I feel sad because I was hoping for some Rook and Oldor, but it looks like it's going to be Pearl and Shifu once again, and they're going to be sticking with Jaden Craig. I think they got a good thing going, but they're just going to have to make sure that they're on the right page length here, switching the skins up. Skins for wins, bro. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, if you guys want to be featured in EU, there's 32, 32 slots available. You can actually register right now for next week's tournament for EU, which is going to be taking place at 7pm. So playtourney.com, sign up. It's free. There's a $250 prize pool up for grabs as well. So get in the bowl. Hello. Okay then, wow. 
these guys didn't give me a chance to breathe last time. It was action packed. Whoa, 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 whoa. We do have. They've switched it up then. Okay, so we're not actually going to see Pearl. Quite interesting. We're going to see Lucy. Uh, I'm not sure what I think of Lucy at the moment. I think in the right comp, she can be nice. You know, she has a good, good shield. Uh, has a panic ability as well. But it was kind of a little bit of low ability. Whilst Pearl, I think, worked quite well with Shifu in this round. So we'll see how this goes. Um, the, obviously, the Lucys we saw earlier were with Baku. He didn't have the damage. Shifu definitely has the damage, so here we go then. Uh, I watched you turn off Fog of War, unfortunately I forgot to turn off in the last round. It keeps... Unfortunately doesn't actually save, save my sentence. So, we'll see how this battles out as they both come in. Shifu does actually miss his charge there and isn't going to actually make, make too much happen, but luckily for him he doesn't actually take much damage on the backside of that. That's one thing when you do actually go in there, come running in and you try and make uh, your abilities, but you actually miss them, you can sometimes just take a Big mouth for damage, but luckily for him, he's alright. But he is taking a bit of a pound on this top side now. Middle orb is up. It looks like red team do actually have the positional advantage of this, and they do secure it, which could potentially be pretty huge. A nice shield coming in by Lucy, and a good dodge coming out by Shifu. And she is petrified, but at the moment, I feel the blue team are really taking some command and lead here. I'm not sure if this is down to the fact that they just got to a bad start. Shifu did get caught on the top side away from his support, then, which I think did actually cost them. I mean, that could be necessary, potentially, maybe it's Lucy, but I think the big biggest issue really then was what I was talking about, Shifu kind of went in, he didn't actually get punished for it, but he kind of carried on going even though all his abilities were on cooldown, he had no damage there and he kind of just kept trying to go on Jade, Croak's able to come back, he's a lot more mobile, he's able to leap over that wall then, whilst Lucy's kind of like, yo bro, where you at, and um, just get dropped. Potentially, maybe she could turn this around. I will be surprised. Croak has taken a lot of damage from that old one, and he's going to have to be careful, but Jade does land up a nice snipe, and <laughs> GG. Well played. <laughs> so yeah, I think the biggest issue was there that Shifu kind of just went a little bit too ham. I, at, first, at first, I didn't think it was actually going to cost him, but he carried on going, and you know the mobility of Croak, and they were able to bat him down pretty, smash him down pretty quick. And I think mean, it's that situation, you know, where I always say, you know, you want to be focused and down the support, and especially with Lucy because she's quite immobile. But in that situation where Shifu's so far overextended from her, if you can drop him down quickly, you know, she isn't going to be able to heal up through all that damage, especially not a Jade and Croak, as they do have certainly put down a pounding, that's for sure. GG. Okay then. So moving in. Round two. Let's we'll see who secures the middle wall. I believe the red team actually did pick it up last time and that did actually the blue team potentially actually they did a uh, snowball out pound pretty quickly. Creating blows for blows. And also the double slough for this comp from Jade and Croak, I, I really like it. It allows them to be quite deadly. You know, I love the fact of Jade being able to use her stealth ability and then line up her snipe after that. And as we see the Croak, just the, the stun combo they, they pull off, as you can see here, once again. Look at that, and it just allows them to unleash so much damage that the enemy team just can't really can deal with it. And we've been seeing some real great uses of the incapacitates this uh, tournament coming in from Croak and very first Shifu. And something you actually want to watch out is actually using those shift abilities. Sure, it costs you know, some of your ultimate. You cost what 25% energy, but as proven with the right comp, and if you're actually with the right communication, it can be pretty deadly. Nice ultimate coming in from Jade, and that's actually going to be a 2 0 take for the blue team. <laughs> Turning things around. So it was previously the red team did actually win the previous game with the Pearl and Shifu comp. It was very close, but it looks like uh, the blue team are going to be taking this to another game. With the investor free, we could still have one more game. But who knows, this Lucy and Shifu could turn it around. I'm just annoyed, you know, if they were going to mix up, freaking go Oldor and Rook, bro. That was that. Uh, no, I was looking forward to that. I just think this would have been such a cool ma matchup. But it is what it is. As we come in then, two minutes on the clock, we're going to see Shifu getting on top of Jode. And th this is just the issue here, is that with the high mobility of the blue team, they can easily, one, juke out Shifu, or two, actually jump on the Shifu. And as we saw, Lucy's just kind of like, yo, bro, you, you've left me here. She's not, taking it, she's not taking any damage from it, but he's just eating the face full of bullets and frog blades or whatever he kind of croaked us with his life. I feel like the blue team are going to be taking us on a cliche rate as the... Jade does unleash all four hits onto Shifu here. It does actually land a nice country ability, but with them both being under 30% health now, I really can't see much happening here. So he does go for the 180 spin, but does actually miss a sniper shot. But with Croak full health, I don't feel the red team can turn this around. Unless he, if, he, if Shifu can get a nice juke onto Jade, it potentially could be turned around here. 
He does actually get a nice stun here, but unfortunately with Lucy being in the on the top side, she feels left to his own accords, and it's gonna be a free on Unless Lucy, oh, unfortunately she she was very close and she was literally a couple of millimeters away. I don't think that water attack would have been enough damage to kill Jade, but that is a free and clean wipe, and that's gonna take us to our final game of the tournament. Then that uh, was one apiece. So with it being a best of three, we are gonna see one more game. Big hype. That was. I just don't feel that the Lucy like the it just didn't work. The thing at least with Pearl, Pearl can chuck bubble her bubbles down so she can actually displace Jade from Croak. She can obviously slow Jade's and come and projectiles. On top of that, she also has her space ability so she can actually close the gap. Her ultimate, I and mean, Lucy just didn't have that and we constantly saw um you know Shifu coming on this bottom corner where Croak could either be attacking Lucy then leaps over or you know both the vaults they both vault over and go onto Lucy. And um, you know, it's just the biggest issue there. Lucy just wasn't able to keep on top of Croak. Um, Shifu, unfortunately. Hopefully, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it would make my day. I would. I would. I'd be a very happy man. Um, we'll see. I haven't really played much of Lucy, but I'm not really a massive fan of her. Uh, I never really see much. <laughs> I never see it go too well when we have a uh, have Lucy on my team. I think mean, you know, in the right situation she can be well. She she can do well, but I just feel with Shifu there, and he was running around all over the place, and she's just like, "Yo, bro, help me! <laughs> Don't leave me." Um, got more points. That's it. Points what counts, bro. Points what counts. Okay, so this is the final game then, guys, of our EU tournament, and it's got taken all the way down, which I like. I like the fact that. You know, I, I feel like last time that the uh, the enemy guys were maybe going a little bit easier on their teammates, but this game has been straight down close to the wire. So it's going to be exciting to see how this final round goes. Yeah, I think Shifu missed a lot, uh, missed a lot of his abilities, um, and you know, kind of it was sort of his own fault because he he charged in and then Jade entered stealth, and he then uh, Jade entered stealth. He misses his abilities, and at that point he then still tried carrying gun onto JDY. He's like, well, her stealth's down, now I can get on top of her, but, well, he doesn't have his javelin toss to engage anymore. He doesn't have his uh, right mouse button, because he tried using that two times, and she dodged both of them by going immortal. And at that point, she he then runs around rule, and Pearl's just, um, Lucy's just not able to follow it, unfortunately, so... Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really like the comp that much, but, the comp that much, but I think it was kind of, um, Shufu could have played it a bit better, for sure. Um, I'm not too sure. I think mean, we'll just maybe wait on, on something. Just wait and confirm the map. So let's see how this final round pounds out. And hopefully some old ore. Old ore? Come on guys. Uh, well, Rook even. Not, well, I don't mind seeing old ore, but Rook, Rook's the man. That's what I'm hoping for. His Rook play was on point, so... I would love to see... I'd love to see um, Rook smash it in. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be... Oh, some Taya though. This could be quite interesting. Oh, Asuka. Oh, are oh, they going to stick with it? Please don't. Mix yeah. it up. All right. okay. it, well, I'd be interested okay. to see this actually go to a final round as these guys. I think it'd be quite exciting, but I'd be interested to see how they actually... Oh, did play someone else. It'd be interesting. But... To be honest, it would be the ultimate showdown, going back to Shifu and Pearl, it worked really well. And I'd love to see if Jade and Croak could actually take it away from this time, because they were pretty close. Yeah. It would make things All really right. interesting. Okay. Um, okay. So to yeah. a couple of you guys yeah. that are messaging me right now, can you play on the tournament? This tournament is about to be over, this is the final of uh, the EU tournament. If you want to join Q3, uh, which is next week, on Friday, 7pm, you can actually register right now at playtourney.com sign up for the EU one right now and then we also have the NA tournament which is going to be at midnight tonight and also you can uh, also next Friday will be one at midnight as well for NA leading on to November 11th which will be the final with a $250 prize pool big hype alrighty then so the 
final showdown. The red team versus blue. And we're going to see Pearl picked up instead of the Lucy. I think this it really complements Shifu. Or it complements their comp they're going against. You know, Pearl's bubbles are on point, which allowed them to avoid a lot of Jades and coming damage. But we'll see how their focus goes. This incapacitate combo once again is so deadly as Jade actually picks up middle orb as well. The fact that she can uh, have snipes actually able to pass through the targets and also or hit two targets allows her to put the damage down and secure middle, which is huge. Again, it just combo. I, I'm just I, I'm. I'm amazed by it. I haven't actually seen, until um, this tournament today, I haven't seen anyone actually play Croak and Jade in solo queue. You don't see too much Croak in TV2, I think he's a bit better in 3v3, as um, a lot of people around sort of low and low struggle with Croak. I think he's a very high skilled champion. Uh, these two are playing it really nicely, this combo they got on is proven deadly. But the red team are sustaining through this, but I think this is going to be GG. The pearl left her own, I can't imagine her turning this around, but Crocus Crow and her ultimate is up. She's going to have to be careful because. Oh, she's chugged out. <laughs> she went. She, I guess I guess there was no harm in trying. Uh, if, she, if she gets it, then, you know, yeah, that could be huge, but. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. The problem with uh, both champions there, uh, one, you know, Jade times right, she can dodge with a Q. Most likely, she's going to jump on a vault and croak. Well, you know, he's got a double vault and a leap, so I, I imagine that. I'm pretty sure that his um, escapes are going to be up. So it, it was an interesting attempt. I think maybe she does land it. You know, it doesn't do the greatest damage, so she potentially could have struggled anyway. But she tried. I'll give her, give her an A for effort. So, our blue team taking this. I believe uh, in the first time we saw these two with the, the, the Pearl and the Shifu, it was actually 3 2. The, the final round really went down to the wire. So, it really could go any way. The problem is is that the blue team have enough damage to beat them down, but it just depends how well that the red team can kite them. But this combo that Cloak and uh, Croak and Jade have got going with this double stun is just so deadly. You know, the fact that they're actually just unable to do anything for so long and they just take so much damage in the during the uh, time as well. Red team, I believe Poe actually somehow sneaked an auto attack and picked that up then. Croak's ultimate is ready. Let's we'll see how he lines us up with Shifu actually having no escapes right now. This is the perfect time for ult. He's potentially looking for a double whammy and going for the style point. He has used part of his energy up on something. He does waste her ultimate there with uh, unfortunately getting hit in Pearl's big old bubble. The red team turned us around here. I think the, the, the issue happened here, Croak completely whiffed his ultimate. I'm not sure if he even used his ultimate, I'm not sure what happened. It's, it's gone and the red team are going to take this here and Jade completely whiffed her ultimate as well. She threw, Unfortunately she, she, she ulted and Pearl made a really nicely timed bubble and at that point it's just too late and she can't do anything about it. So it's going to take it to one apiece. Well played by the red team. It was just the, the problem that you know the blue team kind of cocked up really. They were looking good. I, Pearl, I feel that um, Croak should have just used his ultimate on Shifu, his conjure ability was down, his um, stealth was down as well. But I think he was trying to look for some style points and maybe land a two-man ultimate. I think if he just went on Shifu he would have killed him and it would have been 1v1 and it was GG. But he didn't, uh, he chose not to and it's going to be taking it down to another round. Yeah, and this is our final, this is the final game. It is a best of three, one apiece at the moment and one apiece in this actual game itself. So one game, one game and then one, one, one round. It's going to be tight stuff. It's looking really close between these two. I, I think this is the most evenest matchup we've actually seen out of um, both tournaments we've cast in so far. Which makes it a lot of fun, but I'm just missing Rook and Older, man. That would have been, been so cool. Hopefully they have a bonus round afterwards, eh? So middle Orb is coming up. Croak and Jade look to have a commanding, seem to have the presence in the mid. And once again, there you can see how easily they can just actually secure that middle Orb with that snipe combo and one auto attack coming in from Croak. The red team just have no chance, which has allowed them both of them are pretty much only about 20% away from getting their ultimates already. They did whiff them last round. We'll see what they can pick up with Croak already up. Jade's literally about 5% away from picking hers up. How this pans out, she gets a nice silence onto Shifu, but a good country ability comes herself. Middle orb is up. Once again, we see Jade and Croak using that snipe combo. 
Rogue does use his Wenerman just on Pearl this time, but not doing enough damage, unfortunately. Not as much has we seen down, and the red team are potentially going to be able to turn this around. Jade is on the bottom side. A nice javelin toss onto her, but she does get land to a good uh, bolt, which actually stuns Shifu for a brief second, using a knock away. A nice double castate with Pearl on the top side. Can the blue team? The blue team actually do finally pick up the middle orb for the first time. There's one out of three. Her ultimate is ready. Both ults are up. I feel they time this well. This could potentially go nicely. He is actually going to look to take it onto Jade. It does mean that it does get some nice damage on her. She is going to pick up both green health orbs as he's kind of caught away from his support. And I think this looks like it's going to be the blue team picking up this round. Another nice jab and toss coming in. Pearl dropping low. She is actually going to use a dodge. If Croak Shifu can get onto Jade, it's not going to help if she lands a nice ultimate on the Pearl. GG. I thought the red team almost had that at one point, but it was. Um, well played, some nice counter abilities coming in. I think both teams are making really good use out of their country abilities and counter abilities, which is nice to see. GG! Wow! Such life, eh? Really could go either way. Time to collect. <laughs> There's some big damage coming out from the. Uh, Blue side there, and you see Croak actually scoring over a thousand. He was <laughs> the thing, how quickly he got his ultimate then. He he did land his now doing his that ultimate was actually all that deadly this time around, but still nonetheless they they put out some big damage. And Pearl just wasn't able to heal through that. A little fishy is wearing the saber this time. So, waiting in, we're just waiting on Shifu to pick up his final talent. So now Jade, with her uh, talent she's taken on this fourth round at Inspiration, she now actually gets her energy 10% quicker, which is just huge. And that's what I was talking about when she lands those snipes, so her landing her snipe ability, that's actually, I believe, 14% of her uh, 14 of her ultimate already just by landing that, so an additional 10%. And then a spell block, I think 7% with her auto attacks, you know, Jade can really, she can land her abilities, she can really ramp her ult up super quick, and her ultimate doing, I think it does around about 160 off the Four hits, so right now with her on 139 health, if she landed all four shots, so <laughs> it would be game over. The blue team easily secure the middle orb once again, and that, that could be the difference here, but we're still early stages. I do feel picking up the middle orb is a it can prove devastating, but at the moment we'll see how it pans out. Time's up. Jade actually using her ultimate here, completely whiffing that. As I say, she's just, uh, I've proven you know, with her inspiration ability, she's able to get her ultimate pretty quick here, and also picking up that middle ult from earlier, but once again, completely whiffs it, and this is what cost in the last round, so let's see how this actually pans out. With Shifu getting some nice damage onto Jade, and a nice big draw, so Shifu really needs to get on top of uh, the incoming Jade right now. Very nicely played. She does actually end her stealth. She is going to land a big snipe onto Pearl, and it's going to leave him a 2v1. Unfortunately, Shifu whiffs his ultimate. He does actually decide to cancel his ultimate there to try and get on Jade a little bit quicker, which is actually still going to be up. But I think he's taking too much of a pound in here and making some nice use of his country ability. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough. Or potentially, if he actually. Oh, wow. That feels bad. I don't know, if he, he, if he landed that javelin toss, he would actually have uh, definitely for sure picked up Jade then. But unfortunately, I think Croak would have still taken him on. Maybe he could have baited it out and got out his country ability and picked up the health orbs top side. It would have certainly been cool to have seen him land that, ja land that javelin. But GG! Winning our tournament at 2-1. to one. Really nice play. The, the Croak and Jade were just deadly. Real deadly. Our team Kepo. Really nicely played. Uh, Shifu, you know, I, I feel that they played it really well. It, it was unfortunate, you know, a couple of mistakes coming in from Shifu at the end, to be honest. And we also saw that in the last round with the Lucy, uh, a little bit too aggressive and kind of cost them in the end. I feel they could have played it maybe a bit cooler and tried healing up. Obviously, Croak and Jade are going to come out of them with some big damage, but yeah, it was an exciting final, that was for sure. The Jade and Croak actually won, you know, teaching them for not going for Rook and Older in the end. But uh, the Croak was deadly. That whole the, the stun combo where he contestates them, and then Jade just lines up a snipe, and then with that, you know, they've already taken like, 40 damage from her, and then J Croak then can land a free, free like two auto attacks during that time, and Jade can unload, unload uh, six, six clips into her, or six rounds into them, and then that's G GG. So, very nice. I uh, hope you both have enjoyed this tournament. Uh, it's been super fun casting it. I'm going to 
stay streaming. I'm probably going. I'm going to stream some um, league right now for a little bit. Um, the next tournament we are going to be casting. I'm going to be casting the NA tournament at midnight. So that's literally like three three hours away. So in about two and a half hours, I'll be back streaming some battle right. Um, so yeah, super fun. If you guys want to sign up for next week's tournament, that is the Q3. It's going to be on Friday. You can sign up right now. I will send you the link because I'm a true gentleman like that. It's playtourney.com. Just go on there, create an account, and you can sign up for the EU tournament right now. Um, um, yeah. Been super fun. So I'm literally just gonna hop off of uh, stream for like 10 minutes. Uh, so the winners, the yeah, winners, uh, basically right. the way it we'll works. Go. So the we'll winners yeah. right now, which are going to then go to the winners, uh, will go into the finals. The finals take place on the 11th of November, and there's a $250 prize pool. So the winners from last week, uh, the Q1, this week Q2, next week on the 21st of October, and then our Q4, which is the final qualifying, Q 28th of October, will all then go, all the winners from that, from the NA and EU, will go uh, into the finals on November 11th, where there's a $250 prize pool for EU, and a separate $250 prize pool for NA which is super cool. So potentially uh, we're going to yeah. see some big games right. come we'll come go. November. We'll it should yeah. be some mm. uh, really exciting stuff. I'm just going to jump on to um, Skype with the uh, devs and just have a quick chat. Uh, I'll be back in like five, ten minutes. I'm going to stream some League of Legends and then we'll have the NA tournament, which will be getting away underway at um, midnight. So yeah, you guys can go chill out. No, you guys want to come back for the NA. The NA tournament from last, last week was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Also, if you guys uh, have any battle right clips, you're playing battle right right now. You have some top five. You have some clips for my top right plays. Drop me a message on YouTube, and you could get featured in the next clip. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I'll be back in like five ten minutes.